Yo guys, welcome to Gold 3. Oh my god. If you watched the video that just happened before this, we got camera hockeys, guys. We got camera hockeys. And you might if you also you might have gone even to the deeper end and been like, no, I'm copying vibes actual hockeys. And if you did that, again, totally fine. If you didn't do that, hopefully you're using the F1234 trick I was saying as well, but it keeps it more simple. But still, really nice. So again, now what we're gonna be doing is Loving we're gonna... B2GM. Yo, Woodsy Charles, thank you. Hi chat. Hi, thank you very much for the bits, dude. Thank you, thank you. What we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be using camera hockeys, boys. Camera this hockeys. delay gets longer every day. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It does not. Mr. Pe People Man, thank you very much for the two. Shit. Uh, Woodsy Trails, thank you for the 100 bits. Much love, guys. So, what we're doing today, guys. What we're doing today. Uh, what's new in Gold League? Why, why, why? Not enough. Uh, can you please explain to me what's new in Gold League? Yes, I can. Uh, let me tell you right now. Let me explain it to you really quickly. Uh, so, first of all, notice how at the top of the screen, it says max out at 10 minutes. Well, guess what? That's exactly what we're doing. It's a 10 minute max. 10 minute max, guys. That's number one. What, what's the next thing we're doing? The next thing we're going to start doing and adding into our gameplay is we're going to start adding in a scout. That's not just looking at the natural. Okay, so I'll explain what I just did there. I've talked about it before in a previous video, but in the replay, when we come back to this, I'll explain what I did there to deal with that probe. And now that I have an SCV already going out of the base, I don't need to send this SCV oh, out anymore, and we're all fine. Yeah. So now we're going to right-click his mineral line in his main base. We can Just also make more marines and medivacs. Thank Not you, Mr. Insano Man. Thank you, dude. Not uh, so what we just did, we're adding in this command center to our group. We're going to click the portrait. We're going to click our natural command center. Click the portrait. It centers the screen. Find the camera hockey. Now we have two camera hockeys. It's really nice. So we go ahead and make another supply depot. SCV is on group 2, that's scouting, so I can double tap 2, and now I'm at the SCV. And now I can just go quickly in his base and go, what do we see? I see... Do you see what I see? Sorry, I de-linked uh, YouTube videos, uh, Mr. People Man, because I, I don't want you playing music that I don't have rights to play on my stream anymore. <laughs> I literally... Yo, take pride in the fact, Mr. People Man, that you are legit the reason why I turn that off. I appreciate your support. You're a great guy. But I don't really like it when people find it funny to try and get me in trouble. So I had turned it off. Do I think you're maliciously attacking me? I definitely don't think that. But I think that you don't respect the channel as much as I do. And I think that if I got in trouble and I got suspended for a little while because of some DMCA bullshit, you'd probably laugh and I would be like, well, fuck me, right? I, yeah, I appreciate you. Don't take offense to it. It's just that's literally why I turned it off because you're playing music on my channel all the time that I don't even know if I can play or not. Um. All right. So, what did we see? What did we see? We saw. Again, we'll, we'll we'll talk more about it again as well in the replay. I got distracted by the whole fucking thing with people, man. But again, you know, don't take offense to it, people, man. You're totally fine. I'm not mad at you or anything. I just was explaining. You can't... I don't want you to keep trying to link videos when you can't play them anymore. I turned it off because it was starting to get kind of... Like, I don't trust music on my channel anymore that I don't know if I can play or not. And when you link shit on YouTube, it's... Uh, I don't have mods that are filtering that, so it's risky. <laughs> okay. So we'll talk about our scout and the replay, okay? So again, what are we doing new in Gold League? Okay, we're going for a faster max. We're doing everything we were doing before. We're trying to do shit faster, right? We're doing shit faster. Everything we are doing before. And now, uh, what we're going to start doing as well is we're going to start doing... Um, we're going to actually start reading our scout. And I, I was, I'm sorry, I would have talked about this game, but... I'm sorry, guys. It would be much easier for me to YouTube video. And I was just recording it myself. I, I don't really want to do that, though. It sounds miserable because I stream full-time as well. So there has to be a little bit of Twitch chat involved as well. And I was a little distracted talking to Twitch chat at the start of this game. So I couldn't really fully describe my scouting. But again, we'll, t we'll go back and talk about it. I'll explain it because we're kind of past that point now. It's all G, though. Uh, but what we're still going to do... Other things besides scouting. What are we doing? Faster macro, faster max... We're also going to start doing something with our medevacs when we harass. You know how we've been scouting with a medevac? 
We're going to keep doing that. But now we're also going to look at our medevac. We're not just going to do it off the minimap and be like, cool, let's never look at it. Now we're actually going to look at it. I don't want you to stare at it, but I do want you to look at it. And the reason why is because now what we're doing is we're going to start paying attention to composition. We're going to start paying attention to a little bit of like composition uh, stuff. Because if our opponent... Uh, let's set up our uh, other tank right here. What if I make music and give you the rights to it? No. <laughs> Shut up. He's such a troll. I know you, you, anyone who's watching this that doesn't know, he's a uh, super troll and he's obviously not being serious. He just he likes to watch me get frustrated. Uh, and he likes he, he likes basically make me feel making me feel uncomfortable because he likes he likes it when there's a chance I might get in trouble for something and I'm like, "Dude, fucking stop." And he's like, and it makes him laugh. He's one of those viewers. Uh, and yeah, I'm pretty chill guy. So other streamers, I'm not gonna lie. There's if someone else is watching this, that's another streamer. You might ban someone like that, where they constantly try to get you in trouble, or like constantly try to make you mad, and you're like, bro, I don't really want to deal with that. But I'm pretty. I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't banned him yet, so he's still here. <laughs> he's really nice. He donates a lot, but he also at the same time always tries to get me in trouble. So, like, you know, I would if he was like, hey, vibe, check out this picture I just took. It'd be one of those things where I would click it. If I trusted him, and it would be a big cock on my channel, and they would get they would suspend me for 30 days on Twitch because I clicked his dick picture. That's the kind of man you are, people, man. I know it is. Thank you very much for the support, though. Uh, all right, so we're gonna take more engineering base. We're gonna take more racks. Shift click the mineral line. And then we're going to load up our medevacs. And this time we're going to do two at once, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Group one. We can make two different control groups, okay? So one and two. So one. Click, 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 click. On the right, on the left side of the map. Two. Click, 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 click. On the right side of the map. Now, we're going to try and go to it. Like, we're going to try and, like, move the screen to it. When, uh... Like, when we see a base, we can just do it off the minimap. So now... Uh, easy, here's, a, here's a cool trick I like to tell people. If you are going to micro two control groups on the same side, or on, on the map at the same time, if you make the left key the left side and the right key the right side, it's easy to remember where like one is on the left of two, so one is on the left of the screen. Uh, we're going on the left side of the one, and two is going on the right side. It's also on the right side of one, so two could go on the right side. It's, it's easy. You can just make it two goes to the right, one goes to the left. Just have a sequence like something like that, like a system you use. Where it's repetitive and it's not like one goes left, now one goes right, now one goes left, now one goes right. You definitely don't want it to be random and chaotic because it's way harder to like organize it that way. Okay, so we're going to look at our army, right? What did we see? Earlier we saw stalkers. And what are we going to see now? Am I micring this? No, I'm not micring this. I see zealots though. Now with group one, we can drop here. It's all good. I'm still not micring. I'm just looking at his composition. We're getting tabs on what it is. And it's, it's ground. It's a lot of zealots and a lot of stalkers. So that's all G. We don't got to really worry about that. Let's take another base. What if I make the rights and give you the music? Would that work? Yeah, right. Thank you very much, Ragu, for the bits. No, no music, guys. I'm sorry. I, uh, I don't like song requests. Because you guys don't know what DMCA means half the time. Or you do and you just think it, you know. You don't give a fuck. You're like, ah, let's play it. And I, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Very much appreciated for the the bits, though, Ragu. Much love, man. Okay. Ready for dust off. Uh, vibe. There's royalty free music out there. I know that. But do you think that the person who donates, who likes getting me in trouble, cares about that? Like again, it guys. Do I? You gotta realize this is okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna not gonna talk I'm not gonna talk about this too much because this is super deviated from like actually teaching B to GM. There is a type of person on Twitch that is someone who likes to create drama and he might also donate at the same time. Like someone will donate and go, I fucking hate you. And they donate you five bucks and you're just, they want to see your reaction to it. And what if it makes me literally cr cr shed a tear? And I'm like, <laughs> check out this cool pic. I took eight equals 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 D tilde. <laughs> And then they link a dick in text because they can't, they, they're not, you know, I'm not silly enough to click their pictures they link to me. And then I have a reaction and they go, ha, 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 he reacted. 
It happens all the time. That's it's a standard thing on Twitch. People like to get reactions out of you, so yeah. I mean, do I think that someone who likes to watch me have reactions to be to getting tilted and annoyed and whatever? Are they gonna link royalty-free music? No, they're gonna link fucking like Metallica and be like, let's see how long it takes him to fucking turn it off. Let's watch him freak out for a second. That's just how it is. That's how they are. That's how people are. Uh, I'm sure people know that. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people out there that understand that concept, right? They just... It's, you know, someone finds it funny to watch a streamer to try and make them frustrated, essentially. Again, let's move on. This is kind of a pointless topic. We don't need to talk about it. It's all G. Uh, so, anyways, we're going into uh, our max. We're a little bit late in this game. We definitely didn't macro fast enough, which only... Gotta speed that shit up, right? Let's... Let's definitely next game. Let's try and speed it up a little bit. And, uh... Yeah. We're going to be taking our planetary. Still working on SCVs. And now oh, we scouted the map. Yeah. And now we're going to go ahead and move out. So we know where kind of we're going. Keep up the great work. Thank you, dude. Appreciate you. So we know where we're going, right? We know where we're going. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, drop another command center for our base. Let's move to the right. We'll do right side first. So we're going to group our army up just before... And then we'll start moving our army to the right side. We'll, we'll work our way down, essentially. Keep fixing my economy. We have Again, remember, don't forget, we have camera hockeys. So we can check our mineral lines now like this as well. Let's go ahead and uh, move our army right here. Is there a base? There is no base. Okay, so let's move my army now in position here and take a second to quickly make a lot of racks. So like racks, 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 racks. Shift, click the mineral line. Go back to my army. A move, stim pack, and we're gonna look. We're just gonna look at it when the fight starts, right? So we're gonna stim pack right now. There's no fight yet, so we'll look away for a sec. Go back to macroing a little more. Rex, 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 Rex. Factory, starport, hold shift, click the mineral line. Is there an army here? Still no. Okay, there we go. So now we got Colossus. Stim pack one more time. Look away. I don't want you to tunnel vision the fight, but I do want you to understand what you're up against. So now we know. Okay, he's got Colossus. So what are we going to do against Colossus? The same exact thing we've been doing before. But now you want to know what this means. It makes more sense now that four of our racks over here are going to become tech labs, which adds on to the original one we already had. We can also get concussive shells because now marauders are going to do super good here. It's going to be all about the marauder now. And also, here's a cool trick as well. If our opponent goes Thor's... Or sorry, if our opponent goes Colossus, start making Thor. Here's a cool trick you can do. And why is this a cool trick you can do? Because what I can do now, since he's going to go Colossus, a Thor can use its anti-air shot against a Colossus. Because it's an actual, a Colossus is a unit that can get hit by anti-air shots because it's so fucking tall. That's how it works in the game. Like Vikings can shoot a Colossus essentially while they're flying. So if we start going into some Thors with, anti, with, with their high impact payload shot, we're going to fucking decimate Colossus. Like Colossus are going to just evaporate. So lots of cool stuff we can do right now. We're not done making SCVs. We're super close, but we're not quite done yet. We're taking another base right now with this command center right here. Let's go ahead and take another command center again. Let's check my bases. Not good. This base, good. This base, hold shift, grab these SCVs. Not good again. Send them to somewhere that needs to be good again. Awesome. Now we fixed it. And we're just remaking the army right now. We're, we're still making SCVs though. We're not quite done yet. We actually kind of missed the beat on that a little bit as well this game. But this game's definitely been a little thrown off. Macro hasn't been perfect, right? But it's okay. If it's not perfect, just again, try your best to uh, recover and you know make as much as you can. And what am I doing right now? I'm literally holding down the A key. I can hit, I can also, make, guess what? I'm holding down the A key and I'm hitting camera hockeys at the same time. So if you look at my barracks in the bottom right or the bottom of the screen, I'm still making Marines. Uh, so I can rotate camera hockeys and just hit, like, while my barracks are selected, I'm rotating camera hockeys, and I can still make marines. Uh, now I can grab a couple SCVs here, because they're over. Uh, this is definitely over. Let's grab all my SCVs here. Okay, here's a cool trick. Okay, watch this. Let's say I want to grab a few SCVs here. Green box a few. Let's now say I want to grab a lot here. But let's say this base has mules at it, just like it did before. So if I grab a few SCVs, I hold shift, and I grab a chunk of SCVs and mules. If I now control click... The SCV, it deselects the mule, and I can right click this base now and saturate it properly. And I don't disrupt the mule mining here, and this base becomes pretty good. And I, this base obviously is also good. So, quick, cool tips of hotkeys about what we can do to make sure our, our 
we don't mess things up. Upgrade. Let's go ahead and get building armor and building range. Let's get level 3 base. vehicle weapons. Make this a planetary, and let's take another Upgrade. base Upgrade. down here or something. We can also take another base again. Because again, why? We're going to mine out our bases pretty fast, guys. Like, this game is already pretty long, actually. It's already 15 minutes in. So let's go ahead and now do this. Remember how we talked about our army? Go to your Thors. You can either tab to them. They're going to be the last. Or you can literally click them and go high impact payload. Why do we want to do this? It makes them gain attack range against air units, which is going to make them kill Thors even faster. Okay, so let's go ahead now and A move here into the space. He's also attacking me at the same time. It's okay. Re-rally my base to my natural now. And what am I losing? I'm losing racks. So how am I going to fix that? I'm going to make racks. Racks, 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 racks. Shift click the middle line. Let's A move the next base. Whoops, I just fucked up my SCVs. Racks, 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 racks. Shift click the middle line. Select all army. A move this base. We can now stim pack to get over there quickly. This is turning into like a mediocre base trade. He's also, is he backing up? I don't know. Doesn't seem like it. Okay. Now, what are we going to do again? I'm going to keep making units. Marauders, Marines, blah, blah, blah. Units in general. Rally my stuff to my tanks. Let's attack the next base. Stim pack. We can now just do this. A move, shift A move, shift A move, shift A move. And we're going to just literally go through his base. Stim pack one more time. And let's focus on our macro again. Okay. But look, he's not attacking me anymore. He's actually backed off. So now we're fighting something in the bottom right. Let's check it. Again, it's just a bunch of stalkers. We can stim pack once here and then literally forget about it. Now let's add in... Did my tech labs die? No, but some of my reactor racks has died. So let's make a bunch of reactors here. And now let's make a bunch of marauders, marines, thors, medivacs. And suddenly within seconds, we're maxed out again. Like, we max out so fast. We're going to max out in two production cycles. How's my SCV count? 69. Not good. Make some more SCVs. Drop a bunch of mules as well. Because we can. So again, we're fixing our economy. And we're as our base dies, we're fixing our base as well. Alright. Uh, let's go and get level uh, armor. Like, we have level 3 weapons now for, for vehicles. Let's get armor now. We have all upgrades on engineering base. So those are done. We have a lot of SCVs that are idle. Let's fix that. Send these guys like over here or something. This base needs to fix. Uh, this base is good. Sound like one SCV here. We're good. How's this base doing? It's still good. This base still good. Okay. So now since our army is already defensive, we can lo drop these depots to get rid of the traffic jam. And now let's get my army kind of going towards the fight. And these SCVs all seem like they're about to die, so maybe we transfer them over to somewhere else and maybe build another base on a different side. Now we can A move our army towards his army. Stim pack. And we still see he has a lot of ground units. And look, we're maxed out again. We will max out so fast repeatedly. Now let's make our way down the right side of the map again. So let's go here. See how he's running away from you? Do we care? No, not really. Fuck it, dude. Just go to his base. Literally, don't waste your time chasing him. We'll worry more about that kind of shit later. If he base trades, this is why tanks are so damn good. We can just raise the depots and suddenly we can make new units here. And this, these tanks are going to be so powerful in a base trade. Okay, let's step pack and finish off this right here. And now let's set up our army in the next base. And if we lose any supply at all, we'll just rebuild it. Let's also rebuild this base up here again. Now my army, let's send it into this base. Go ahead and step pack in. Good to go. We can transfer some SVs to a different base. Okay, this one right here is fine. What's happening? Okay, it's a bunch of uh, ground units. Awesome. Step pack one more time. Call it a day. Go back to instantly remaxing your army. So what I just did was I just hit 4, held down D, then I held down A, then I hit tab, I hit T two time, a couple times for two Thors, I hit tab again, and I hit a few medivacs. And now what's going to happen again? I'll do it again. D, A, tab, make a couple Thors, make a couple medivacs. Within 10 seconds, 20 seconds of dying with an entire army, I'm remaxed again. That's why we make enough production, right? So let's check our bases, check our bases, check our bases. Transfer some SCVs over to a new base again. Get these bases flowing. Let's take our planetary here. And now we just hit the, we just hit, we just hit the right side. Now let's go hit the left side. Okay, so let's select our army and move our army down here to the left side. Let's also get rid of these rocks because they're like in the way. 
Okay, so it looks like he wants to kill this base. We could always repair it. SCV count still pretty decent. Let's go ahead and A-move my army now, down to him. And we can stim pack because we're like here right now. And then fix my SCVs, send them over somewhere new. Grab a few of these SCVs because they're a little over. This base is fully gone. Oh, send SCVs yeah. down to like here right now. Cool. Love the content. Now let's go further over. Let's also make sure once again our Thors are in high impact payload. And they don't spawn in high impact payload. Yo, Whistler, thank you very much for the seven, dude. Thors do not spawn in high impact payload. But what a Thor does to a Colossus is... Uh, I'll, ex I'll explain it to you after. Let's go back to this mark in the game, like 21 minutes, and I'll show you the difference. We'll show the difference, okay? Of the attacks and what they do. It's insane. So one of my Thors right now is in high impact, and one of my Thors is in explosive. Okay, he's got a lot of Templar. Does it matter? No. We're, what are we going to do? D. 4 D. A. Tab. I'm already, I'm already maxed. Okay, well now there we go. We're losing some more units. So now we have two Thors, we have four Medivacs, and we have a bunch of Marine Modern production. Do we care about EMPing Templar right now or things like that? Things that are crazy like that? No, we don't care about that right now because it's not actually the priority. We're going to wear this guy down over time either way. He's going to have to deal with big army after big army after big army, and he's eventually going to die. Okay, so let's transfer some more SCVs wherever we can that's oversaturated and put them on good bases. Because again, that is the real goal. Okay, let's now take my army and go A-move the right side. Because we uh, totally can. Lots more units popping out right now. What's happening there? Oh, it's a DT. Okay, so we can scan. We can repair. And oh, let's start making turrets. Let's start making turrets. Let's start making turrets. Let's start making turrets. Turret. Uh, and grab a couple of CVs and go for a turret and a turret. What's happening here again? Okay, he killed my turret. Let's do it again. And now our army could be moving down to the right side here and just going, all right, cool. Let's go ahead and uh, move into this side. And if there's a base here, it's going to die again. And there's not. So now we'd be going into the next side if there's a base here again. We would now go kill it. There's not. See how this is the kind of shit you can't do. If you just don't rebuild bases that die, you get yourself in a situation where you're like, I hope these three DTs can win the game now. It's again, and what does what is that? Base upkeep and macro. Let's look at resources lost. We lost just as much as Protoss did, pretty much. It was very close. Yet we're able to constantly hit 200 supply over and over and over because we just never stop expanding and making are making sure our economy is always running as smooth as possible and then making sure our uh, you know our production is running smooth 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 so check this out okay watch this let's go back to the, the early 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 game scout how did I fix the SCV on the, on the racks that we talked about thanks vibe thank you Kyle cabinet thank you man appreciate the 10 dude much love much love man much love dude Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so a Protoss player gets in your base, right? A Protoss player gets in your base. And he's the kind of player that's like, eh, 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 I'm going to attack your probe. And every turn, a player is like, fuck, this is annoying. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. My poor, like, you're just hoping your SMB goes to, like, the other side, and you're just watching Fucking him. love B2GM. They're some of my most watched VODs. Yo, Trauma, thank you for the five. And thanks for saying that, man. I'm glad you like, I'm glad you like it so much. Hell, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so, like, all you're doing as a turn player right now is you're hoping the SCV goes to, like, the other side. Because you're just getting electrocuted in the ass. Like, you're like, oh, yeah, nice, SCV. Do it again. Do it. Please. Okay, that wasn't so good. And I was still right in the area. So, when this happens, when your probe, or when your SCV starts getting attacked by a probe, okay, all you got to do, it's super simple. It's a two-step process, or really a three-step process. Oh, Wrath Bomb, yeah. thank you very much for the 32, man. Much love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome back. It's a three-step process. It's not that bad. Here's all you do. Grab two SCVs. Don't grab one. Grab two. It has to be two, okay? Don't grab three either. Make sure... It's very specific, okay? You know how, you know how sometimes I'm like, you can do like... Uh, like 20 to 24 racks, 80 to 85 workers. Doesn't have to be exact. 
this is one of the times where it does, okay? Because if you grab three workers, it's fucking pointless. And if you grab only one, you don't have enough for the, the purpose of what we're about to do, okay? So what you do is this. If you grab two SCVs off the middle line, as soon as your SCV building the racks is taking damage, it goes like this is a three-step process. Step one, select two SCVs and tell them to A, move down to the area. Step two, tell the SCV that's currently building. Once the, SC once the SCVs that are coming down are close, like right there, for instance, or like on their way, like once, once you have SCVs close to the racks, because your racks is not going to be very far away, correct? So once your SCVs are close nearby, or once this SCV is like half, whatever comes first. So I want to explain that this, the step two can be a confusing one. I want to explain so you guys don't get confused. It's a judgment call by you, and it really depends how fast you react by grabbing two SCVs off the middle line. So in theory, you don't want to stop the SCV that's currently building the racks. You don't want to stop him from building it until the next SCV from one of these two is like right next to it. In theory, that's what you want to do because you want to instantly stop it and then instantly start building it again. You don't, you don't want your barracks to be delayed for like 20 seconds for no reason. So you don't want to like, for instance, you don't want a probe to show up and then go, oh, halt. Let's go back to the mineral line now. And then like literally 20 seconds later, you have another SCV come down and start building it again. That is really bad. Don't ever do that. That is super bad. So again, that's why step one is pulling the SCVs and telling them to come closer to your racks. Step two, again, ideally should be when another SCV is close, that's when you halt and tell the weak SCV to go back to the mineral line. The only exception to this rule is if SCV number two starts getting to the hit point pool of what it is like right now, where it's like in the, like, you know, less, it's either like a, a little bit less than half health. Because if a probe does five damage, that means this SCV has four seconds left before it's going to die. I love it when you touch my tralalala, my ding ding dong, especially deep in the night when I'm looking for some fun. Thank you, people, man. Much love, dude. Um, hell yeah. What a song. Uh, I feel like I'm listening to it already. Thank you, dude. Uh, so, if, again, if if our probe is like 20 health, especially like 15 health, anything lower, we need to s tell him to halt like right now. Again, there's the command for it right there. If, and if, if an SCV is building a structure, it has a command on the command card called halt. And by default, it is T. So the easiest way to do it is you green box your, your barracks and you literally will select the SCV first. It'll prioritize the SCV. You then hit T for halt, and then you right-click the mineral line. That's all it is. And it will tell the SCV to stop building the racks and then go back in my minerals. Never hit escape. Do not do not tell the SCV to escape. Like, don't do that. Some people do that. It's a brood war thing. And if you do that, if you accidentally click the racks and you hit escape, you'll fucking cancel the building. Don't do that. There is no T for cancel on the building that doesn't that doesn't work like that so don't be don't yeah it, make sure you hit my t. wife and i watch your b2gm since 2019 we call your streams vibe therapy <laughs> you have such a calming voice and can watch you for hours even at times we don't play starcraft thank you again for this series master vibe yo hyperion thanks that's awesome man i'm glad that's actually the coolest thing about that is that you and your wife actually watch starcraft together and that uh, you guys have the desire to both get better at the game and like, you know, you enjoy it. Uh, thank you for both of you for watching the, the videos and stuff. And you know, thanks for supporting the stream as well, man. And, uh, yeah, thanks for letting me know. That's awesome. Uh, that sounds super cool. Uh, much love, dude. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to halt the SUV, right? We're going to halt it. And it's either one of these two things. You halt it when your SUV, your next two SUVs arrive. So one of them can take the job again. Or when the SCV, you feel like it's going to die because it's like down to half health and you're like, I don't want it to die. You definitely don't want the SCV to die. If it dies, that sucks ass. So halt the SCV at the whatever time comes first for the two situations I just described. And again, that's step two. So step one was pulling two SCVs and A-moving down here. You just A-move. You don't A-move the probe. You A-move the area. Just to do it quickly. A-move towards where the SCV is getting attacked. Step two, halt SCV and send it back to the middle line. Step three, grab one of these two SCVs and right-click the racks. And you have now fixed this situation, which takes all of about one second when you get better at it. Instruction like unclear. Canceled my racks. Yeah, right. That's right. Thank you for the 100 bits. So, again, what we're doing is a three-step process. So, here's what it looks like in real time. 
Oh, we're gonna get attacked. Grab two SCVs, A move the area. Right now, grab two SCVs, A move area. Halt SCV, because it's almost dead. Right click the racks with one of those SCVs. And now this SCV, I didn't touch it again. It was still on A move, and what is it doing? It's just chasing the probe, being like, just drilling his ass, being like, get out of here, bro. Super easy three-step process. I know a lot of Terrans struggle with how the fuck to deal with an SCV getting attacked by a probe, and a lot of times what Terrans do, which is wrong, is they only send one SCV down, not two, and then they always have one SCV getting its ass kicked repeatedly, and they're like, fuck, dude. Every SCV almost dies every time, and this Rax is like taking twice as long to build because a probe is literally just sitting there just electrocuting me all day, and it's super annoying. But you have to realize the probe can't do that anymore once the barracks is done, so minimizing the amount of time that your barracks is on is on delay, basically, because you keep taking SCVs off of it, the more you minimize that, the faster the racks finishes, and then as soon as the rack's done, suddenly you have guys with guns coming out of that shit, and now probe has to leave or it dies. So you really want to maximize the build time on that shit. It's super important. And now since in, now we're going to change our build a little bit, it's very easy to understand, okay? Just, just hear me out. What do we normally do in our build? We tell this SCV that's building the racks to go scout towards our opponent. And before what we were doing is we were right-clicking his natural, holding shift, and then right-clicking our natural. That's what we were doing before, right? Now in Gold League, we're going to start scouting into the main base, and we're going to start actually understanding why we would make a bunker or not make a bunker. The whole point is now we're actually going to try to start reading a build to a degree. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. So again, what uh, overall, what are we trying to say? The goal... The goal is to get a scout over to his base, right? That's This SCV's job is to go scout. But since we had to do the two SCV trick thing we just talked about, now I have a probe, or my, uh, sorry, now I have an SCV that just pushed the probe out of my base. And he's currently running away. And since I already have an SCV over here, I'll just use this as my scout now. And this guy can just build my command center. And then now my next SCV building doesn't have to build a command center because normally what would happen is this SCV building right now would be my command center SCV and this SCV would be my scouting SCV. But now again, I can just rotate it to where this is now just another economy SCV to replace this guy off the mineral line. And this guy's my new scout. This guy's my new command center. It's fine. Not a big deal. Hopefully that makes sense. So now we're going to go forward to a scout, see what we're looking at. And now here's the thing with scouting. So what we want to look at for scouting, the best way to learn how to scout an opponent. Again, let me let me give you the misconception of most people who play StarCraft 2. I'll, I'll do this is what a this is what a StarCraft 2 player would do if they don't know how to scout. This is what you I, this is what I don't want you to do. It'll be very fast. Okay. He's Protoss. He has a natural. And that was a gateway. Okay. Uh he's got Double gas. Okay. So I know that whenever people talk about how to scout builds, double gas means tech, right? So this could be DTs now. This could be Sky Toss. Uh, this could be Colossus. This could be uh, a Blink Soccer all in. This could be a uh, Charge uh, No, probably not Charge Lot all in. And let's, let's, let's just say. Hold on. Thanks for being awesome, Vibe. You're doing a lot of good for the community. Thank you, Troggy D. Uh, much love, man. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for the thirteen or the fourteen, and you're doing a lot of good for this stream. <laughs> Thanks, dude. So let's say, let's just say you had like a gold player who who thought to themselves like all these gas builds, and then they were like, he might be doing a charge lot all in. And let's say he got he's like two hundred IQ for a second, and he goes, wait a second, is it the charge lots don't really cost gas though? So would he need to go for crazy amounts of gas? And he's like thinking like vibes and talking about mineral priority, right? And if the if the gateways cost minerals and zealots cost minerals. Does he need double gas and blah, 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 whatever. And the answer to that actually is yes, but you wouldn't mind it the entire time. But let's let's think about this, okay? So what, what did I just do? If I'm a lower level player, what did I just do? This is what most lower level players do. I tried to guess what his build is already, entirely. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are signs that start pointing to things, but you have no fucking idea what build this guy's doing yet, okay? Overall. We have no clue what build he's doing yet. If we just started saying, oh, it's going to be DTs. Uh, it's going to maybe Sky Toss. Uh, maybe it's going to be like a Colossus all in. Maybe it's a mass Blink Stalker build. Like we don't know any of this yet. We literally know nothing yet. And you shouldn't think about it that way 
because you're just guessing. Here's how we should actually scout someone, okay? This is what you should do. Watch. It's so much easier if you if you look at games this way. Okay. Our SCV gets to his base. And what do we see? What do I see when I get to his base? Think about it like this. I see a gateway. It's done. I see a second pylon with the first pylon. I see a nexus. I see a cybernetics core. That's it. Awesome. I see a lot. I see five buildings here. Now let's look at your base. I see a command center. And not only do I see a command center, and I know I just built it, but look at the build time. And remember how I, do you guys remember how I was, uh, this is, uh, one of the things I want to make sure, like, you know, um, uh, this is this will become more relevant. I'm gonna just drop a quick point. It's not super relevant right now, but I'll just say it in general. This is why also in the very beginning of the, of the welcome to the gym video I made where I said make sure all your health bars are on always. Now, if these weren't even on always, you would probably see this either way because it's if it's not like full health, it's gonna still show you a, a hit point bar. But it's really easy to see what you're scouting if you have a hit point bar notifying what is there. So like I, it's, I can very easily not only see the graphic of a gateway, a core, a pylon, a pylon, and a nexus, and two probes, but now it also makes it easy if I also gauge it off of hit point bars. So I always, it's like it's like an identifier, right? There's a hit point bar there in the middle of nowhere, which is very obscure to the color scheme of the map of the, of the floor of the map here, which clearly tells me there's a unit there. And when, here's the thing: when you have a lot of units in the same spot, it's it's way easier to read the amount of units when you can see hit point bars. Well, again, we'll talk about more, a lot more about that in the future. I, I just wanted to say the idea of that right now because it is relevant. The reason why is because we're looking at hit point bars. We're, we are actually looking at the health gauge of buildings. That's what we're scouting. We are not scouting everything in the sense like, oh, I know he's going DTs right now. We don't know that yet. We'll figure that out later. Okay, but for now, all we care about is how early did he build this because this changes things. And I go like this. Oh, well, look at this. This command center is like one fourth of the way done, maybe almost like a third. Our command center is about a fourth of the way done, maybe almost a third. What does that mean? Did I go double gas command center? No, I didn't. Did I go command center before barracks? No, I didn't. I went depot, gas, or sorry, uh, depot, racks, gas, command center. So you know what I can already tell from my opponent? Because his gateway's done, my barracks is done, his nexus is the same build time as mine, my command center is the same build time as his. I can tell because of my build that he went gateway, core, nexus. That's all we need to know. That's it. And what does that mean? So think about StarCraft 2 in a way where let's just say there's a hundred builds. There's a hundred builds at the start of a game. And because I now confirmed what his opener is, the amount of builds that exist now that it could be is now 50 instead of 100. We just literally eliminated 50 potential builds, which is double gas tech builds, two gas tech builds. It's proxy all-in builds. It's, uh, you know, uh, cannon rush. It's any, of, any variation of any of these. What if someone went for, like, straight-up cannon rush only? What if someone went... Cannon Rush with Gateway Proxy. What if someone went Cannon Rush with Multi-Gateway Proxy? What if someone went Cannon Rush with Robo Proxy? What if someone went Cannon Rush with Stargate Proxy? What if someone went no Cannon Rush at all, but now just Gateway Proxy? Four Gateway Proxy with only Minerals, with Zealots. What if they went three Gateway Proxy with Stalkers? What if they went two Gateway Proxy with, like, a followed-up Robo? What if they went Gateway Proxy with Stargate? What if they went uh, one Gateway Proxy with, like, Fast Robo, Fast Stargate? You see what I mean? Like, there's so many variations of so many things that this could be. And we know already all of these variations of aggression are deleted. And now think about tech. What if this was a really fast gateway and then cybernetic score with double gas and it's like double Stargate opener really fast and it's really quick void rays? Or what if it's really fast Dark Templars? Like, this guy literally throws down a gate, a core, and then an immediate council, and then he expands. Like all these kinds of builds that are supremely heavy in the tech realm and all these builds that are supremely heavy in the proxy realm, all in realm, essentially, they're all gone. They don't exist now because he did the same build as me, which is standard. One production building for to start your tech path, it's not to be aggressive. 
I mean, you could harass each other. Like, one Reaper could go across the map. That's very fair. Very fair. But there's a big difference between someone going for, like, four racks Reapers and one racks for one Reaper. It's like one Reaper versus, like, 16 Reapers, right? It's a big difference there. So we already know he's not going to all-in us, and we already know he's not teching really hard. So I already can rule out all these fucking kinds of builds, and now all I know is that he can still do a lot of stuff, but at least for the first, like, four minutes of this game, nothing's going to happen. At most, it might be, like, one Stalker comes to my base, or, like, two Adepts, and that's it. And if I am making units the whole time, too, it'll be, like, two Adepts show up, and I have, like, eight Marines. And I'm like, hi, what do you plan on doing here? I can lift my depots in my main and you can't go there and I'll just follow your shade and I'll kill your adepts. And then it's fine, right? So nothing intimidating is happening. This is how you need to read a build when you're a newer player. You have to compare your build to their build. And let me tell you one more thing why this makes sense. The supply cost of a depot is 100. The supply cost of a pylon is 100. They both give 8 supply. The supply cost, or sorry, the, the resource cost of a gateway is 150. The, the resource cost of a barracks is 150. They both have a 46 second build time. The mineral cost of a command center is 400. The mineral cost of a nexus is 400. They both cost, or they both take 71 seconds to build. These are numbers that, do I expect you to know them already? Not necessarily, but these are things you should start actually paying attention to by actually paying attention to the fact that how long and how into his build is. So look, if I mouse over this, 71 seconds, right? 23 seconds into production with the, with, out of 71. And I can gauge it off the HP bar. Again, now, does it have to be perfect? Do I have to be exactly on 23 with that? No, I just know it's around a third of the way done. Roughly. And now look at mine. Command center, 18 seconds of the way done. It's roughly almost a third of the way done. It's very close to his nexus. So I can already tell our builds are the same. Look, he's got a second pylon started. I have a second depot starting. Like, our builds are identical. They're super close. And here's the thing, right? You could be like, well, Vibe, there's a discrepancy, right? He's got a cyber core. It's 150 minerals. We have an orbital command. That's 150 minerals. Our builds are fucking identical right now. They're actually just identical. And because they're identical, I shouldn't be thinking to myself... DTs, uh, Sky Toss, Mass Stalkers with Blink. Like, you don't know any of this stuff yet, so don't even try to think about it that hard. This is where lower level scouting falls apart so hard because you try to think that because it, it'd be like it'd be like saying this. It would, it would be like let me give you an, an, an analogy now, really fast. Imagine if someone said, "Okay, here's here's the here's the situation. I want you to guess." what the final number is going to be. There's going to be three numbers that get revealed at once every three minutes. And I want you to guess what you think the final number will be. And let's say the first number out of those three numbers that are all question marks right now is a seven. And then you got a guy who's like, Oh, I know. I know. It's 42. It's 42. It's, I know it. It's 42. That dude's fucking gambling. He's totally guessing. He doesn't know fucking anything right now. He's literally gambling. It's 42. I know it. I've, I've been here. I have a premonition about it. I dreamt this last night. It's 42. And it's like, it ends up being 31. And it's like, no, sorry, you're wrong. It's not quite 42. But let's say now you see seven and then the second number is 13. And now logically, you know, Oh, so far we're at 20 and it's going to be plus something. Well, now you have more information and now you can probably make a little bit more of an educated guess to like know more in a realm of what the third number is going to be, but you still don't know what the third number is going to be. But now, you know, seven plus 13 is 20. And let's say finally the third number comes out and it's a eight and you go, okay, seven plus 13 is 20 plus eight is 28. It's 28. And now, you know, it's 28. And how do you know this? At stages of the game, you scout again which we're not going to do in Gold League, by the way. We're just doing the initial scout. We're getting the first of those like three number analogy here. We're just getting the first number. We're actually understanding what his opener is. Because in StarCraft, there is opener, there is follow-up, and then there is mid-game choice. So you, you can do an uh, opener. Like, for instance, you can have a Terran player. Let's you, Since we're doing a Terran series, let's talk about Terran. What if a Terran player opens up 1-1-1 with like a barracks, like barracks command center into a factory starport? 
So it's literally one production building of all three. So one starport, one factory, one barracks. It's a one one one. That's their opener. Or like rather, sorry, their opener is like barracks command center. We can tell he's not doing it all in. It's just a command center and a barracks. And let's say we scouted like two minutes later or like three minutes later and we saw the follow-up was one one one. Because he's one one one, can I just with 100% sh uh, surety go, I know it's bio. I know it's mech. No, we can't do that yet. You have to file, do a final follow-up to find that third magic number to go, oh, there's more racks. It's bio. Oh, there's more factories. It's mech. You need to actually scout and to know these things. You can't just guess. Because if you guess, you assume things. And when you assume things, you lose all the fucking time at higher level in this game. No one who's actually masters is going to be able to play good games in terms of how to like react to your opponent if all you do is assume shit. You have to confirm shit. You can have... But here's the thing. There are a lot of subtle signs that people show you that can allow you to confirm things before they happen because of how people place things and move things, and that's super advanced, which we'll talk about that again much later. But again, right now, if you guess what his entire build is, you are legit gambling. You have no idea yet. All you know is the opener has reduced the range of what it could be down a bit. So, like, for instance, if someone says, like, let, let me let me give it one more analogy. I'm going to make it more specific. Let's say someone says, okay, you, you can make, if you guess within a range of, like, like, if you guess what the number is, you get a bunch of money, right? And here's the rules of the game. Each number we reveal will be either a one digit number or a two digit, two digit uh, either a one or a two digit number. So it's not going to be like 5,000 or some shit. It's always going to be like something between one and 99. And let's say they go, if you can guess in the realm of like the area where the number is, you win. But if you guess wrong, you lose. And let's say the first number is revealed and it's a 61 already. And it's up, let's say the total can be up to 100. I already know automatically because the first number is like let's say it's 61 i already know now the remaining two numbers could only add up to 39 or less than that so i'm not going to see the first number be like 61 and go oh i know the final number it's 12 it no it's 22 it's already ruled out it's gone it's not even a factor anymore because we know just like this we know it's not an all-in uh, via double gas tech and it's not an all-in via proxy those are gone so we just thinned out we like we 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 lessened the range of what his build can be. We now have more of a magnifying glass on mid-game builds and in-game builds that don't play early game only. We now know his build's going to evolve to something more. That's all we should know, right? That's what we're looking at. That's how we read people's builds. This is the biggest concept I'm going to try and teach you guys in Gold League is how to actually look at a build and understand what the fuck it means. Okay, so as we leave his base as well, Again, also another thing too, guys. Another thing too. Vibes yelling. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I got super passionate right there. It's because people, I feel like people don't know how to scout in this game a lot of times because there's so many times when I, when I, so many times when I've coached people in like, let's say like Diamond League or like Platinum League, I'll be like, okay, I'll test, I'll test that person. And I'll, I will literally ask them, what do you think this means? And they'll tell me, you know what they'll tell me every time? And they, they do it because they're like, this motherfucker doesn't know that I know what happened because I played this game and I'm going to tell him exactly what the guy does and it makes me sound like a smart genius and they go like this well you see Vibe when I scouted this I was thinking to myself I feel like he's going to go Blink Stalkers and he also is going to think Colossus seemed pretty good with that so when I scouted this I just had the feeling that this is going to be Blink Stalker Colossus it just made, I just, this is what I thought. And I was like, what? How the fuck do you know he's going to go playing Stalker Colossus? It makes, nothing tells you that yet. Yeah, it might happen, but nothing tells you that yet. And what he's doing is he's going, well, I played this game and I know he's going, I know he goes playing Stalker Colossus. So, I mean, that seems like a good answer. And it's like, all right, that's not how it works, right? Well, there's actually reasons why people do things with their, with their tech. You can't just go, well, after the game, hindsight's twenty twenty, and I know what he did. No, you, well, you can't you can't walk into the fucking future and 20 minutes into the future and then go tell your past self 20 minutes ago, I know what he does. He's going to fucking void ray proxy you. Go scout that. You don't know until the game's over, right? So how do you how do you actually predict what they're going to do with with an educated guess, not just fucking once the game's over, then you know what it was, right? So that's why I was like, you don't know anything yet. You can't know what it is yet. 
You just know it's not certain things. That's all you know so far. The only way you can confirm what it is is with a follow-up scout to know how much economy he's going to invest into or physically seeing the tech. Those are big signs. Again, you can re- uh, just to throw it out there, the, before we move on from this, the final piece of this is when you get really advanced at scouting, you can actually predict what people are doing based off of how fast they take economy. Okay? You can. So I there are plenty of times when I play a ladder game at GM level where I don't even see, let's say I'm playing against a Zerg player and I don't even see Mutalisk. And I go, he's going Mutas. And my chat's like, what? How do you know that? And then 30 seconds later, Mutas fly out of his base. And they're like, what the fuck? How did Vibe know that? And I'm like, well, guys, he made like no Banelings. He made no Roaches. He's mining a fuckload of gas because I scouted the gas. and he, he took it really early and he's not expanding very fast. And then Mutas fly out of his base. And I'm like, well, the only things it could have been would have been uh, like someone who goes like Mass Infestors because those cost a lot of gas. But who the fuck goes to just like Ling Infester in ZVZ? Like nobody. They would just die to Roaches at that point. Who goes... Uh, and then uh, the, the other units possible, like who goes, if they're not going to make Roaches or Lings, who just goes into like Ling Lurker right away or like Ling Hydra right away? I'm sure someone can do that. That's more, that is a little more practical, but still that's really hard to not die. That that would take a very high level player to make that work. And you could, you would, you know, that it's a little different. Or it would mean like you're getting Nidus all in. Like something with gas is happening and the most logical reasoning as to why, what it would be, would be pr- like, if, if also if they're going for like Speedlings is Mutas. It's lo- it, th- it logically things add up to a certain situation. And again, do I know 100%? I'm like, yep, 100% it's Mutas. No, I don't. Like, when I call Mutas like that in my own game, I don't know 100% without a doubt that it's Mutas, but it's a very good guess. Like, for instance, if I play that situation 10 times, nine times out of 10, it's going to be Mutas. And then that one time out of 10, it might be a guy who goes Ling Lurker, or it might be a guy who goes Speedlings into a Nidus which are much more awkward. There's, the reason why they're not as common is because they're awkward and rare and oh, a little inefficient. Yeah. But sometimes inefficiency actually beats other players because it, it metas them and they're like, you can't be doing that. What the fuck? He did that. Oh, okay. Didn't expect that because that didn't seem like a good choice, but actually killed me because I didn't prepare for it. So I hope, hopefully that makes sense. I hope this concept makes sense. Again, all we're talking about is base scouting. So let's take it all the way back now. Our build compared to her, compared to his build we are not owning, we're macroing, and he's done the exact same thing we've done so far. We know, and look, he added in a second production building. So did we. His build is legit identical to my build. Identical. That's all we need to know. And now we're not going to scout anymore. We're going to scout more in Platinum League, and we're going to scout more in Diamond League, and we're going to scout more in Masters League. But all we're going to do from this point on in the game in terms of scouting is whenever our medevacs fly over and poke stuff, we're going to look and see his composition. I'm not going to micro it. I'm not going to stare at it. I'm just going to quickly look and look aw- look at it and then look away. I'm going to be like, what's killing my units here? Oh, it's Stalkers. Oh, it's Zealots. Oh, it's an Archon. It's Void Rays. It's a Tempest. It's a Colossus. It's whatever. It's an Immortal. And the main thing we want to know is, is this guy going to go for air or is he going to go for ground? That's all we need to know. But now we're actually looking at his composition. We're trying to see what he's doing, right? <clears throat> okay. So now I got to, it's in hot as shit in here. This room is getting hot. Complete. Add on. You want a piece of me, boy? Okay. Then we got a depot going down. Got our tank sieged. All the, the builds are the same, right? Our builds are literally the same as it was before. Same shit. And now look. Did I have any idea? Did I have any idea that this dude was going to show up with a bunch of stalkers? It'd be like this, right? It'd be like, so vibe. What do you think Overmind's going to do uh, in this game? And then let's say I'm, I'm the guy being coached. Well, I just had a premonition that he was going to go blink stalkers and he was going to attack me and I I just I I knew that was going to happen and it you know it's like what was the reasoning for that I could tell at the start of this build and it's like no you can't cuz we didn't do a follow up scout but you want to know the beautiful thing about our build uh, the beautiful thing about our build is that it's safe so even if we don't know he's going for blink stalker build he shows up 
and we just smash the shit out of it. Like right now. We don't give a fuck. We're like, nice stalker build. Back, back up. Back up. He killed a depot and lost like three stalkers for it. And now we're just making the same thing again. We're chilling. The beautiful tank placement, right? This is also why I tell you to put your tanks behind the wall a little bit. Because look what he tried to do. He walked into the wall to try and kill my tank. And he was taking so much damage in the process that he decided, okay, if I kill that tank, I might lose literally every stalker in the process. So let's just get the fuck out of here. Let's leave. That way he doesn't lose everything, right? Okay, and then now... Remember how I talked about the two control group thing? So now what we're going to start doing is we're going to start trying to do two drops at the same time in Gold League. Are we going to micro them? No, we're not going to micro them at all. I am literally doing... We're doing the same thing, but we're doing it one after the other right away. So one of them goes on the left side of the mineral lines. One of them goes on the right side of the mineral lines. And the further... The, the closest... The first base you see... So if I... If let's just say hypothetically, there's a base right here and my medevac was right here and it flew past it. And now my medevac's right here, and I see another, or rather like right here, and now I see another base right there. I 100% should turn that medevac around and drop that mineral line. And the reason why is because if I drop the further out mineral line, if my second medevac flies down and I see no bases all the way until his natural, if I drop here at the natural and here at the fourth base... It drags your opponent further out of position so that your other medevac can also do damage. Again, we're not microing, but we're hitting the furthest side of the base every single time with both of our drops. So we literally have the most time to pull our opponent from left to right. We don't want to drop here and like drop also like right there because he could literally attack this medevac, kill it, blink up, and then kill that medevac as well. And it's like, oh, that wasn't that good. We were too close together. But if our medevac is here, and then our other medevac is all the way up there, that's not one blink anymore. That's like run, blink, keep running, blink, keep running, blink one more time. Or no blink at all and just run for like 12 seconds or like 15 seconds. So, yeah. Like, you always want to drop further apart. And it's going to scout your opponent. As well, that's what we're doing, right? We're scouting for where the bases are. Are we, again? We're not. We're not scouting his over his base. We're not scanning right now, being like, "What is he building? Is it a bunch of fucking colossus? Is it? Is it sky, sky toss? What is it? I don't care. We we don't care about that because we're still in the phase of the game where efficiency beats non-efficiency. And the more you do shit, where you scan someone's base, if you, let's just say in the first like six minutes of the game, you scan their base seven times because you're like, I don't know. I need to know. That's terrible. Yeah, I would, you would much rather have been better off just dropping a bunch of mules instead. And just building an overall average build here like we're doing. Because it can deal with a lot of shit. So, now we have our medevac. You know, one of our medevacs arrive. We tell it to drop the middle line. One of our medevacs arrive. We tell it to drop the base. And this is going to happen to you. I guarantee it. And this is okay. If, if, if you do this really slow, it's, we're getting better at it, right? We're learning how to do... We're, we're learning how to get comfortable with moving medevacs around the map. I don't expect you to micro them at all, like, very efficiently. And we, don't, we didn't know that this space existed. We just told our medevac to chill right here in the area because this is now... We know he has a natural. We confirmed it already. So we made a shift command all the way to the newest base outside of the natural. We just wanted to know if this base existed, and guess what it does. So, this medevac drop did decent damage. We killed what? We killed uh, seven probes, and we killed a couple other things, like maybe a zealot or something. And then our medevac, our marines all die. And now this medevac's dropped. What does this do? Our, med our marines all die. And now we know as our marines die, it's like this, right? This is the idea. This is the idea. You're macroing. You're macroing. You're macroing. Uh, we're doing all of our macro. And you go like this. Oh, we're under attack. Okay, zealots with charge. Go back. And what did I just learn? This guy's got a lot of ground units. He has a ground army. That's all I needed to know. And now, and now I have an idea of what... Again, are we going to do anything different? No, not really. Our build's going to pretty much be the same. But now at least I understand what I'm up against. 
And again, later, that's going to make more sense when we're good at doing that because now we can start abusing our opponent in certain ways by changing how we micro based on what our opponent's uh, unit composition is. Because what if our opponent plays an army style that's really fast and all over the place, but it's really weak as well? It's like super fast, but less powerful. We'd be better off punching a hole with our whole army right through the middle and just like pushing through. And what if he's got an army that's really slow and bulky and like it's hit super fucking hard, but it's it's slow. Well, what if I drop around him constantly then? And I just constantly like st like stab the sides of his base over and over and over and we just wear him down until he dies. It Understanding what kind of army your opponent has makes a difference. And we're not going to talk about armies yet that much. Again, it's above what we're at right now. It's above what we're at. We're not talking about how to micro against compositions because we're not even microing. We're just trying to now start taking a look at them and understand. Okay, he's got zealots with charge. Cool. So it's ground. Awesome. That's all we want to know. I just want you to at now start taking a quick peek and then look away. Take a peek and look away. So again, the first game is always going to feel a bit overwhelming, and if you need to, like for every video I make, because it's always explaining a lot of the new concepts, and if you need to, obviously rewatch this again as many times as you like to really feel like things start to sink in and, and stick. But as we go, we'll just be doing what we talk about through the rest of the games in Gold 3, uh, you know, adding it into our gameplay every time. And now we're doing the same thing we were doing before. We're A-moving base to base to base. We're grouping our army up here. Now we A-move the next base and we group our army up. We move the next base and group our army up. The reason why we group our army up is so that our medevacs don't fly off by themselves and die. We want our medevacs with our bio. And now we're here and we stim pack because there's a base here. And am I watching my army the whole time? No, I'm just going to wait until I hear or until I see on the minimap big red flashes being like, you're under attack, you're under attack. And like, like watch, just watch the minimap. You'll see it. Watch the minimap. Like, we're still macroing, we're macroing, we're macroing, we're macroing. Watch the minimap. We're macroing, we're macroing, we're macroing, we're macroing. Watch the minimap. No red flashes yet. There we go, red flash. You see that red flash? That means something of ours just got attacked. What is that? Colossus. Up until that point, nothing attacked us. So now that I know it's Colossus, what this means is, is now if my build is able to go into Thor, Marine, Marauder, Medivac, I can just go Thor, Marine, Marauder, Medivac, and we could just... You know, we have bio to kill ground units, and we can have Thor help kill Colossus. Awesome. Super nice. Also, at this point, at this point, too, what we're going to start doing as well, just for now, just to actually utilize our factory, is we're actually going to start making Thors. Thors are not the priority, so there's, there's like a three-step priority. The first step of priority is SCVs. The second step priority is all of our racks. The third step priority is our our gas buildings, which is the medevac and the Thors. I don't care which one you prioritize, but you can make either one. But you obviously are going to make both. So we want to make sure our racks are pumping as much as possible. We want to make sure our SCVs are pumping constantly until we're done making them. We don't want to fuck that up. And then we pump the rest of our excess money into Thor medevac. Easy peasy. We're going to start adding in Thors like consistently now. Uh, we'll, we'll actually use tanks as well later on. But for now, we'll actually start using like utilizing Thors in just standard games. With bio. And again, it's only one factory though to start, so you're not gonna have like mass Thors. Okay. And now our army is gonna die. It's okay. Our medevacs are all kind of sitting there. Command it's okay. I'll grab them when I next select the army. Uh, looks like they're all going to die. It's okay. Again, is that the priority? That seems pretty wasteful, right? You're like, oh, Jesus, vibe. That's a lot of medevacs that you just lost. I agree. It was a lot of medevacs that we just lost. But does it matter? Does it really matter, though? I mean, it will matter later. Yes, it will, but... If you're, if the priority for, again, if you actually watch that fight, if you watch that fight the whole time and you were like, okay, all my Marines are kind of dead now. Let's boost my medevac. Like you, what you watched it until you knew the exact moment to boost your medevacs out of there. You would not have this right now. You would not have that because I guarantee if you watch the fight, you're not going to macro during the fight. You would also not have this. 
you would also not have this. Because we did all, all as my medevacs died, what we were doing in the process was I sitting there with my thumb up my ass being like, I don't, I don't know. Uh, what? Starcraft 2. <laughs> no, I was building buildings to get my production to a nice solid amount. And I was building units as well, which is why we're maxed again, even though I just threw away like eight medevacs without even realizing it, right? That's not the priority. It's the priority once we can multitask. And now we have Marine Rotter Thor Medivac. Awesome. And now let's look at the next fight, right? Really quickly. Get down to the fight. So he's starting to base raid us, which is totally fine. We now A move the base a little bit. And now he killed one of my bases, I just killed one of his bases. And do I do I care about this attack if it would have kept going forward? No, not really. And the reason why is because I will tourniquet my base repeatedly. Like, for instance, I will raise these depots. Here's an easy way I could do this. What if I did this? What if he broke this base? Think about this for a second. What if he broke this base? Here's a really cool, easy way I could fix my base. Let's say this base dies, he starts killing all these racks, and then he eventually makes his way to this PF. What if I did this? Group 4, which is my production, I rally it to right there. I then go to my main base, I lift up my depots, and I click all these racks and the factory and starport, and I rally it to like right there. And I just keep making units the whole time. And now when he shows up to my base, we have tanks w behind a raised wall shooting his army. And if I feel like I have enough army here in a blob to fight whatever's at my doorway... I could try to support the tanks and pull my SCVs or something or just fight in the area. And let's say I haven't if, let's say I haven't had enough time yet. I could just re-rally my main base now back into my main like right there or something oh, and then fall back behind a second yeah. wall and now I could reinforce this tank behind a second wall with more production and just and get more marine marauder. Meanwhile, if this base entirely dies, I'm going to thin out his army a lot in the process while I'm killing his entire base. And I could then also, all these units that were rallied here the whole time, this is going to grow in terms of supply. And then I could have another SCV build like another command center and just start expanding along the bottom side of the map because I just killed it. So I can start taking this base, and then this base, and then that base, and so on and so on and so on. And re-expanding to his bases. And look, he shows up, right? And look, it's all good. We end up losing the fight overall. But we took a lot of Protoss with us in the process. But look at the problem. While we took damage, we rebuilt. I'm, I'm still rebuilding. I'm still rebuilding everything while we took damage. And while the Protoss took damage, he's not fixing this base. He's not fixing uh, other bases that we've killed. All right, I think he did fix this one. Did we kill this one earlier? Did we? Did we? I can't remember. I think we killed it. But he's falling behind because he's not fixing it enough. Like He's down to 36 probes, guys. Granted, I've killed 47, but he's still not fixing probes. He's building nothing. This is the shit that will kill you in this game if you don't fix your shit. Still no probes are being built. This is like a full two minutes. The reason why he's not building probes right now is because he's super convinced that the only way he can win this game right now is by this army. Like, this army needs to win the game, essentially. But then he also is making Nexus behind it, so he has the idea that he wants to make expansions, but he's just not, he just has an oversight that he's not macroing units out right now. He's not making probes. Which is going to make him broke forever, which will never win because, as you can see, since our economy is so much stronger than our opponents because we have a good economy, he'll never keep up with me. Ever. And we'll run his ass over every time. And now this fight's going to be brutal for Protoss if he actually takes it. Okay, yeah, this is when he ran away, right? So now we just go push the space. Okay, now look at this, right? Some juicy storms. The only chance he had here was storm. And he definitely made it work. Did we micro anything here? No, we didn't micro anything here. It's okay. Like, we're storms to the face. Hardcore. Lots of storm. I'm bathing in it. I am literally bathing in those storms. But look what's happening in the process. Even though we're bathing in the storm, my opponent's supply is dropping. My supply is not dropping. My supply is 
going like up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And it's going to eventually hit back to 200 supply really fast. And the reason why is because we're utilizing all of our production. We're just cranking it out. And he's still losing units. It's not even the fact the fight's over. These Thors are actually pounding units right now as well. Like, how many Templars are going to die? Jesus. That was like six Templars that just died. Another Stalker dies. Another Stalker dies. Like, his army looks very tiny, right? And my army is about to max again. And there we go. We're maxed out again. So even though we took Storms to the face like crazy, did we care? Because by the time the fight ended, we're already maxed again. And I already have the same army again. Because as soon as this wave of production finishes, it's all out again. If he were to push across the map, it would be out by the time he got there. Like, all these units everywhere are just spawning all over the place. And now look at, look at my army. My army, once again, at this point now, is two Thors, four Medivacs, the three tanks that are still here, ten Marauder, and 67 Marines. In literal seconds. Like, in 30 seconds after the fight, we're already maxed again. And we're maxing. And the thing is, it's not even just after the fight. We're rebuilding during the fight as well. So if the fight itself takes like 20 seconds, it's now like we've been macroing for the last 50 seconds. Because we macro since the first unit dies. And now he's getting, you know, aggressive to push me again. But we're already maxed again. He doesn't have any units to deal with this. So he just gets run over. It's like six zealots fighting 67 marines. It's not the same thing. Now let's look at this for a second. Look at, look at the uh, Thor for, uh, for a sec. Uh, javelin. I want to. I want to see one of these swords. In okay. Okay. Now here we go. Here I want to. This is where I want to explain Thor, and th this will be the last piece we do. So, if we scout composition, here's what I want you to start understanding with Thor's. Okay. If we scout composition, this is what I want you to know with Thor's. If you're fighting against massive amounts of little air units, I don't want you to think too hard about it. Okay, if you're fighting against mass banshees, if you're fighting against mass phoenix, if you're fighting against mass uh, void ray, if you're fighting against mass uh, mutilisk, mutilisk is the most important one, just so you know. But if you're fighting against a lot of little air units, put your Thor like just leave your Thors be. Let them be on the what what's called the uh, uh, this guy has it. All right, wait, what? What? There, okay, it's this guy. Sorry, it's this guy. What am I talking about? Uh, it's this guy right here. It, it attacks with this right here. Ten range. It attacks four times. In, each attack it does, it shoots. It literally multiplies it by four. And it does a shitload of damage to light units, which is, generally speaking, what most of the units are that I just named. Like, a Void Ray is not light. A Medivac is not light. A Phoenix is light. A Mutalisk is light. Uh, a Banshee is light. Like, these other units, are, a lot of them are light. And it means that this Thor does a shitload of damage to light units. It does double damage. And it, it wrecks. Like, if this, especially th Mutalisk. Like, it, like any player, Terran player who plays against Mutalisk, if you have a Thor in this mode, it makes Mutalisk die so fast. And the biggest thing it does as well is it does area of effect damage. It makes AoE on top of its attack. So if, a, if, your, if your opponent's air is clumped up, it splash damages the entire air ball. Like, or a big chunk of it. Like, in the area that... Th all the units around the unit that gets shot, like in a close vicinity to it, like if, for instance, if like this, let's say this Marine got shot and it was a Mutalisk, it would hit Mutas probably in a radius about that big around it. Which could definitely, if the if the air is like stacked super hard, it could definitely hit like 10 Mutas instead of one. It's very realistic. Now this Thor is on high impact payload. And this Thor should be the mode you go into when you think you're fighting against big air units. Like if you're fighting against battle cruisers, if you're fighting against carriers, if you're fighting against Tempest, if you're fighting against Broodlords, the, the big air units. Put your Thor in this mode versus the big air units. Okay? And if you don't know, here's the thing. And, here, and here's the default, okay? So I always like to give you like a fail safe. If you don't know and you're like, well, vibe, what if I don't know what I'm fighting against? What if I just have no fucking idea? Put it in a high impact payload. Just put it, if you have literally no idea what you're fighting against, put it in high impact payload. And the reason why I say that is because high impact payload will, generally speaking, get the job done better than explosive payload versus more things. Like it just, if you were to like take a lot of different examples, high impact payload overall does a little bit better in most situations if you average it out. So if you don't know, high impact payload. If you do know, 
High impact payload when you know it's capital ships like big boys, the carriers, battle cruisers, bird lords, things like that. Explosive payload whenever it's little air units like Phoenix, Butalisk, Banshees, stuff like that. Uh, like the little smaller air units. And remember, Thors by default always spawn out of the factory in explosive payload. So if you don't know what you're fighting against or if you know it's capital ships... Make sure you rotate the Thor's attack into high impact payload. It, you need to do it. It's a command on the Thor right here called high impact payload. If you click that, they, they like shift their cannons to the top of their head. And your Thor gets this like big ass cannon on the top of his head that the other Thor doesn't have. Notice how this Thor has like these massive guns on his head and this Thor does not. This Thor has like guns on the shoulder almost it looks like and like guns on his hands. This Thor still has guns on his hands but he's got guns on his head now as well. And the reason why is because his back literally is not on his back it lifted up onto his head that's the graphic that you can see as well to tell a thor is in high impact payload these cannons that are like swords on his back now don't sit like that they come up over and now they're fucking pointing forward that's the high impact payload and the cool thing here's the final thing the cool thing again this is what i wanted to talk about in the first place the cool thing about high impact payload okay the cool thing about high impact payload is look at this. Look at the range, right? It says 10 range on the command card. It's one of the bottom four numbers. The second one on the bottom four says range 10. That's that's missile. That's the explosive one. That's good versus light units. Now high impact payload, which is good versus heavy units like big boys. <coughs> now look at the range. Notice how the number now says 11, not 10. It has more range in high impact payload. And now here's the big one as well. Look at where it says versus massive. It has bonus damage versus massive. And every unit that is a big boy like a broodlord, a carrier, a battlecruiser, a tempest, these are all massive oh, units. So yeah. not only do you get more range to shoot at them, but you do a fuckload of damage against them. It's insane how much damage you do. And the coolest thing about all of this is that a Colossus, he doesn't have any more anymore, which is, which is sad, but a Colossus is the only ground unit in the entire game of StarCraft 2 that actually is so tall that it is allowed to be attacked by anti-air attacks. So a Thor can actually use its high-impact payload attack on a Colossus and kill it from 11 range with 47 damage per shot, which is insane. And it shoots at 0.9 seconds per shot, which is fucking so fast. That's super fast. That's more than one attack per second. It hits so hard and so fast and from so far away. So if there was Colossus over here behind his army, I would be shooting a Colossus with this Thor about that far away right now. Like literally, I would be shooting about that far with a under the Colossus's face with that Thor. What if I had like three Thors? I would be destroying Colossus in the back line. And the, the, the Thor will also, it will always prioritize a Colossus over like a Zealot. So if I have like three Zealots poking the Thor's face, and there's a Colossus that just walked in range of high-impact payload, my Thor will ignore the Zealots and just kill the Thor. Or, the, my, sorry, it'll kill the Colossus. It'll shoot the Colossus as a priority. So it's super cool. Uh, it makes Thors really good in these kinds of situations. And now look, he's storming us again, right? But does it matter? I mean, he's, he's killing my whole army again. Now he's got DTs killing me too. He's getting all crafty and stuff. He's like really working me down with DTs and Storm. But look, I just lost my army, and then guess what? I'm maxed out again. And now he tries to attack me, and we go, oh, he's got DTs. Let's go ahead and make turrets now. And now it's it. Like, we're, we're maxed out, and we're doing our same thing again. Man, we're attacking the other side. He's super dead. So, again, that's basically a full rundown of Gold, gold League right there. We're going to be doing everything we just talked about every game now, but we're going to definitely make these next games go faster because uh, that was definitely an introduction to the, uh, the upgrades of Gold League. Is super stuffy. Sorry, I, I know it probably looks gross. Might get tissue in my nose on camera, uh, but I had to do it. I had to do it, man. All right, same thing again. Same thing again. We're gonna scout the Zerg's opener, and then we're gonna do drops into. Uh, a move of Thor, Marine, Marauder, Medivac. 
Vibe, are we still really on the first game review? Yeah, we are. Because people learn from that. I. It's so funny. Uh, YouTube doesn't know this, but my god, Twitch chat is so impatient. Guys, while I'm making the series, my Twitch chat is literally just complaining the entire time. Can you hurry up? Can you please stop taking so long to do these games? Oh my god. Guys, don't worry. I'll get to your league eventually. I promise. I promise. And then I imagine when I get to your league, you'll appreciate that I spend time teaching you shit instead of just skimming over it. And you're like, wait, what did he just mean? <coughs> Additional supply depots. <coughs> wait, what was that? Vibe, can you elaborate, please? Because you just went over that really fast. No, because uh, I got to go faster. Okay, well, I guess I don't learn anything then. Be patient. It's okay. <clears throat> At Vibe all started my B2 GM practice today. First game in Silver ZVZ. Found another Vibe fan and we had the same build. Hydras slamming against each other feels good, man. Nice, dude. Thank you very much, uh, Sumilux. Sumilux for the, uh, the bits, dude. And uh, that's, you know, that's awesome that you guys are, like, clashing with macro builds in lower league. It must feel good, honestly, when you have, like, you, you, like, it's like you're pushing each other to the limit, right? With, like, massive army after massive army and, like, who's gonna finally take the lead? Good stuff, man. If you were a Terran Marine and were forced to have non-consensual intercourse with a Zerg unit, which unit would you choose? Not enough minerals. I, I don't know. Um, something without a bunch of spikes and acid. Go ahead. Command center upgrade. It's like every Zerg unit, though. Let's Not be real. Probably. Let's do an ultra. Hot dog in a hallway. Okay, let's uh, so what are we scouting? We scouted Lings, right? And we scouted a natural that's like, oh, we just also scouted a Bane Nest. So what do we, what we just saw was we just saw aggression, guys. Not only did my, uh, not only did I, my, uh, whatever it's called, die, my SCV die, but we also scouted someone who went pool early and Bane Ling Nest before he went for a natural. That's why his natural was early and his, this shit was super far along, like, or is done already, rather. So what, what are we going to do against this? Now we understand why we're making a bunker. And also, just to throw a quick explanation as to why I put the bunker where I did right now instead of right there, is because this natural is really wide. And if I put a bunker out here, and if he runs past it and runs into my depots, that's going to suck. It's going to be annoying. So I put a bunker here um, just for now so that I could... If he runs past it, I can not only cover my mineral line, and I can also cover my depot wall. OMG, can you please, please do it right and not worry about chat clowns. I mean, I'm, I'm streaming though, right? Ragu, there's only so much patience one man has. I'll just say that. Thank you very much though for the bits. Appreciate it, dude. Uh, okay, so now we're going for, uh, you know, more depot wall. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Keep making my boys. Let's go ahead and transfer SCVs. <laughs> okay, let's get our tank sieged on the high ground. <clears throat> let's get our starport. Yeah, whatever. Huh? SCV ready. <laughs> Alright, dude. Okay, let's siege our tank yeah. now on the side of the depots. We'll get the RCV out of that. You should have said you'd do it with a drone. No. 
I don't really want to do it with any Zerg unit, let's be real. It's always an interesting question to answer. I don't really find Zerg attractive. Okay, so we're going to go into uh, our third tank now. Do I know what this guy's doing? No. Does it matter though? No. Let's go ahead and take our next command center. Let's go ahead and also take a couple more depots. Let's keep making uh, our engineering bays and let's keep making depots. Grab some SCVs for the gas. Okay, we're getting Nidus wormed right now. So what are we gonna do against the Nidus worm? Let's re-siege my tanks now. Let's siege like one tank like right here. So here's the trick against Nidus, guys. Don't freak out. Don't be like, dude, he's a Nidus, I gotta build I gotta go over there. Watch this. Absorb it. Do I care at all? Not really. I'm just gonna rally my, my units into the area. We're gonna move our SCVs and ship it to the middle line. Keep making uh, SCVs. Look at that. Oops, I don't want Widow Mines. Awesome. Guess what we just did? We just absorbed the Widow Mine, or the, the Nidus. Now, if I would have saw the Nidus right as it started, then yes, it would have made sense to go kill it right away. But because I didn't see it right away, I didn't actually go, oh, the Nidus is going down and I'm already right there. I didn't know exactly when it would pop, and if I didn't know when it would pop, it makes more sense to just uh, absorb it like we just did. Like, literally stand there and let it come to you. Vibe's head would explode if he had to deal with Artosis' chat. You guys act like I don't get backseat gamed at all. I get backseat gamed all the time, every day. You think my chat is all saints? Complete. Definitely not. Uh, it's just, here's here's the concept. Here's the concept of why it's annoying sometimes. The amount of times you have a lower level player argue with you that what you're doing is not efficient. And you go, is it? Is it not? How do, how do you know that? And they, from what kind of experience can you make that uh, conclusion? And they go, from my uh, from the amount that I've, of Starcraft that I play, which is one game a month. Okay, so you're the expert now. And then having to convince people that are just so stubborn. Because again, guys, if I wasn't making a guide, right, I could just ignore you and be like, all right, I fuck teaching this person. He doesn't want to learn. But I'm making a guide, so I'm really trying to get through to you every time. And it's exhausting when people are so... Add on. Complete. Uh anti-learn mindset. Also, I've made this series like four times now, and the amount of times people still disagree with me, even though I've made it so many times, guys, it gets exhausting. It just gets exhausting, when I, like when I read Twitch chat. I've done this too many times, and it literally gets doubted the exact same way every time. It just doesn't work, and then it works, and they're like, I do it again the next game. This doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Let's expand again. Additional supply depots required. What's going on? Additional supply required. Okay. So now, what are we going to do? What are we going to do now? We're going to load up two medivacs. One, go on the right side of the map. Control two goes on the right side of the map. Control one goes on the left side of the map. We're going to scout the map right now and see what's going on. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for the sub, Alex. Much love, man. Bad news. 
Okay, and these depots right here, all this is doing is it's giving us kind of like a little bit of a wall that Lings have to run around to get towards my middle line so they can't just go behind my base. Uh, do you have to do that? Not necessarily, but I, it's just, I don't know, I'm just doing it. It's kind of a habit of like actually playing at a higher level because that's, that's kind of shit you do do later on a lot. Okay, we'll do that more later on, but for now it's not that big of a deal. Just to explain what that looks like and why, why that is there. Okay, let's go ahead and add in a couple more. Okay, look, we got... So, we just... What do we see? Oh, Mutas. Let's go drop his middle line. <laughs> Call it a day. And now that we know it's Mutas, let's do this. Missile turret. Missile turret. Missile turret. Missile turret. Grab my units that are oversaturated. This space is good. Send them all down here. And we can drop some more meals. Upgrade. And now let's go ahead and get ready to go attack. Let's get rid of this bunker because it's kind of a traffic jam situation going on here. And let's move out. Let's also get 2-2. Two, two. And we also need combat shield. We never started combat shield. So we know his base. His furthest out base is that base right there. So we're going to go here first. Okay, he's attacking me. It's okay. Uh, I, I guess we're still defensive, so we can go defend now. It's okay. We're, our army's still on the defensive side of things. So let's take our army and let's A move towards him. And let's just rebuild that command center that just died. Command center. Turret. And we can also build a turret over here. Okay. Uh, now he ran away. He literally ran around me. So let's actually just go back to his base again. Start the process all over again. Keep making SCVs because some of my SCVs just died. Okay. Base needs to be fixed. Base is good. Base is good. Send SCVs here. Also, now let's maybe add on like two more turrets per base. And the reason why is because he actually has a lot of Muta. And we're maxed out as well. So now we have the money to really afford it. Let's make like two more turrets per base. So we'll go to three turrets total per base. And this is going to help a lot at dealing with more Mutas if they decide to keep attacking me. Grab my Ermi. And now let's get ready to go smash his top left expansion. Yo, AJ, thank you for the Prime. Much love, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, he's counterattacking me. Keep making units. Okay, let's kill his next base. Base is good, base is good, base is good. Let's aim move this base with Stimpak. Go, go, go. Okay. We can run our SCVs for. Oh, just kidding. He's leaving again. He's getting distracted because we're attacking him, which is fine. Keep making SCVs, guys. This base is almost good. This base is done as well. Let's go ahead and take another command center as well. Fight after. This base is good. Let's group our army up to attack the next base. And Stimpak A move. Again, he's going for the same army he's been going for the whole time. So it's uh, Mutas, Banelings, and, you know, Zerglings. Mutaling Bane. GG! And now, at that point in the game, when the game just ended, that was this is now the point where we're, when we're maxed out, my money's, my resources are getting fixed. He did kill some of my SCVs with those counterattacks, but my resources are getting fixed. We're going into now. We're getting a lot of money now, and we're going to go into another factory, another starport, and like another ten racks or so, so that we can go into uh, twenty to twenty-four production buildings, right? <laughs> okay, so just looking at efficiency of the build. <clears throat> why are we ahead? The reason why we're ahead is because our opponent went for a uh, oops, our opponent went for a pool and then a bailing nest before going for an expansion. That's why by default we were ahead. And then finally, like check this out. So when does when does the Nidus actually go down in our base? And when do we actually react to it? Nidus goes down in our base. And this is why I didn't go attack the Nidus. And let's explain why. Nidus goes down to my base at 5 minutes and 37 seconds. Okay? 5.37 seconds because it's been up for 1 and it's 
Now, at 537, if I would have saw that go, <laughs> and start building in my base, I could have easily unseeded one of my tanks. It would have been probably the best thing to do would have been leave this tank sieged in case he comes to the front as well. Unseed this tank, grab all my free marines with this one tank, go over here and kill the Nidus. And we would have definitely killed it before it finished because this thing has 14 seconds to build and it has 300 health and it has like five armor. So these marines and that tank would have definitely been able to kill it just before it finishes if we left like right now. But look at when we move our units. 537 is when it started. We don't move our units until like 540, 541. So I waited until uh, this Nidus is already like four seconds into production. And by the time my Marines will actually get here, like every, again, every second counts, right? And I haven't even started unseaging this tank yet. Oh, so yeah. there's, and we don't know, we don't even know exactly when that Nidus went down. Uh, we, it might've gone down eight seconds ago. And I might, cause I wasn't, I was looking over here. And then when we came back to our base, we saw it. So we we're like, oh shit, there's a Nidus worm in our base. So that's a moment where instead of running to it, because here's the thing, right? Watch my watch how I move my bio. Right now, I just stopped moving my bio. Imagine if I ran my bio all the way, instead of stopping right there, what if they were standing like in this area right here? And what if I was getting closer and closer and closer to the Nidus with these bio units? What would happen is my Marines would get to the point to where I would be starting to shoot the Nidus as it finishes, because it's done in three seconds, so my Marines would probably call, like start a concave as the Nidus screams and it finishes. And then he's unloading Zerglings and Banelings out of that Nidus. And I'm also really far away from my tanks. So if I had my Marines just by themselves out there, and if all my Marines died, there is a much higher chance now that my base is going to get overrun, because I'm just going to throw, throw away my Marines without actually supporting my tanks with them. Which would be scary. That'd be super scary. But now if I'm standing right here, and I actually now because of the Nidus is, is, is screaming in my base and it's done, and I bring my other tank up. <coughs> now because the Nidus is finishing in my base, if I just siege my tanks in the area back here for the intention to kill shit as it comes towards me, what I like he can't just pull it up because if he pulls it up, my tank will start shooting shit far away and it'll like pick things off as it tries to like, if he like rallies his Zerglings like right there, for instance. But if he also rallies it right to me, I will kill units one at a time as I stand near my production so I can also reinforce my army really fast. So you can see, like, I still... My Marines still die, right? My Marines still overall died in the process because we didn't micro anything. But in the process of doing that, my tanks were also able to shoot and get six kills on that tank, five kills on that tank, one kill on this tank. If my Marines all died over here, this tank would have zero, this tank would have zero, and this tank also didn't siege right when it opened. This tank sieged about like three seconds after it opened. So these Marines might have literally all died with every tank getting zero kills. So because my Marines died within tank range, all my tanks combined now have 12 kills. So I've killed not only units with my Marines that died, they like traded and died, but I've killed another 12 units out of this all in by staying near my tanks. It increases the chances that I'm not going to die tremendously. And now more Marines spawn out of the rally. They kind of get Baneling busted and killed by the other one. And finally, the last tank is, you know, again, like, but this is also why my tanks are scattered. Like, I didn't put all my tanks in this, like, one little tiny triangle right there. If you scatter your tanks, they can shoot. They buy each tank more time to shoot shit because Lings group up on one tank while it dies. And then I'm shooting it with another tank the whole time. And then they finally group up on another tank, and then that one dies while another tank far away is shooting the whole time. It's always within range of other tanks, but they're not stacked together because the reason why is a siege tank has a dead zone. And what that means is, is if a unit is within a range of, of the tank about that big right there, if they're close to the tank, like within two range of the tank, a tank can't actually shoot a unit while sieged in that range of the tank. So if a Zergling gets on top of the tank, it can't shoot anymore. It's like, uh, 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 I'm dead. The only way you can shoot a unit within that green box is if you unsiege it and it goes back into normal non-siege mode and then it starts just single auto attacking, which is way weaker overall because it doesn't hit as hard. So, yeah, like we definitely want to scat scatter our tanks so we don't just get a bunch of links surrounding my tanks and then killing all of them in a dead zone. That would suck. And look, we're still making units the whole time, right? <clears throat> Oh, 
At least that's the goal. And now he's super dead. And now I can actually have a Marine go over here. And uh, now, you know, that, like now, because here's the thing. Zerg can't indefinitely unload out of this Nidus. Zerg has waves of units, just like we have waves of units. And now that he's unloaded his entire wave and it's dead, he's going to have to wait for more units to spawn. And now this is why, I. and once again, am I just walking Marines up by themselves with no assistance? No. I walked them up with the assistance of this tank, which has 14 kills right now. And then I also now sieged another tank within the range of the... Like, so this tank is within range. Front tank is within range of the second tank. Second tank is within range of the third tank. My tanks literally always cover each other. Uh, it's like a leapfrog formation. And this tank... Uh, both of these tanks actually can cover the Marines while they kill the Nidus. So I have lots of cover for these Marines to actually blow this Nidus up. And this Nidus is definitely going to die because of that. And after the Nidus is all said and done, that was very aggressive by the Zerg. And now we're... Doubling supply almost so it reverts right back into what it always is before where efficiency beats non-efficiency and we just start Kind of manhandling manhandling the zerg from here through sheer macro <coughs> And now we flew over that base that was a bit of a mistake and then our, our medevac actually gets caught by mutas this base, look at this though. Remember how we do double drops? If we drop the farthest most base on the other side of the map, what happened to his army? Look at where his army's located. We just talked about this concept last game. His army's way the fuck over here. And now look, this other drop is in his main base. If I microed it, it would be even better. But again, we're not microing yet. But look, he's out of position. And now what do, what do these Marines do? Uh, we'll go back right to when it started, like the 44 or whatever. So what have I killed so far? I've killed nothing with my Marines yet, but let's watch the Zerg's units lost in the main base. So I'm, I'm literally dropping into a Spore Crawler, which kind of sucked. <laughs> I ended up killing a Muta. I killed his Queen. I killed like two drones. I killed like maybe four Zerglings or three Zerglings or something. Not bad. I'm going to let you know right now, killing a Queen and a Muta was already a really good trade. Not a bad trade. Like we just, and the reason why a queen is a good trade is because yes, a queen is cheaper than eight Marines and a Mutalisk is the same exact cost as a Medivac. So those kind of cancel each other out. But the Mutalisk, or sorry, but the, the queen is definitely cheaper than eight Marines. But the problem is, is now that this Zerg lost a queen, he has no injects in this main base anymore. And that's huge for Zerg because now his larva is disrupted. So that sucks because now he's going to just have less units and more money that he can't spend because he can't inject properly anymore. So that feels great. He has to make another one to fix that. And if he doesn't fix it, that's going to be a problem that's going to cascade throughout the game for a while. That's going to just give him a bigger problem over time. And then look, when Zerg attacks us, we have a 70 supply lead. 60 supply lead. And now we push in. He attacks my base. It's whatever. We kill his base. We kill another base. He tries to come back and defend. And again, this is what it looked like when he does that. So when he shows up, this is what the overall fight looked like when we looked away. When he shows up. Right now. Okay. So right now, Zerg's at 8k. We're at 4k. Pretty much. He's lost about double what we've lost. And when the fight starts, it's a bloodbath. Now after that, we're still at 4k. Zerg's now at 12k. Now he's about almost triple what we've lost in seconds. And that was because he stacked up the mutas and Thor's shot the shit out of those mutas. And also our Marines just shredded the mutas with Stimpak. And we just have too much. So he's super dead. Efficiency, boys. Too much. Beats not enough. That's how it will always go. That's how it works. Oh, yeah. Also, yo, uh, Frontline, thank you very much for the uh, 21 months, dude. Excited for the new Terran V2GM. Thank you very much, Frontline, for the 21-month resub. AJ, thank you for the Prime. And uh, Zacharoom, thank you for the 10-month resub as well. Dude. Much appreciated, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you kindly. Thanks to Vibes B2GM, my Terran is now Diamond 2. 
It used to be masters but I still like him. Nice. No worries dude, I got you covered. Uh, stick with me and I'll keep demoting you. <laughs> Thanks dude. Thank you for the bits, Barry. Not enough mineral required. Yes, sir. 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 Nice. Nice. SCB ready. Oh. SCB ready. <laughs> okay, let's got his base. Got his base. Let's uh, expand. What's going on? Go ahead. Command center upgrade complete. Hey, there's no expansion, so now we're going to confirm why. We got one one gateway. We got a forge. We have one gas. We have a second gateway. So look, we have three buildings that all cost the same. This is 450 minerals right there. That's invested into that. Meanwhile, we have a command center, which is 400. So equal, co like we also have a barracks, so it's similar, but yeah. Oh yeah, the guys, he's, let's go ahead and make a bunker. Build's a little awkward, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little weird. But we already know he's. Here's what we know. Oh, he's not going for an economy build. He's going for a multi-production building build and with also a forge. This could be a cannon rush, for all we know. We have no idea. Let's just go ahead and build a bunker. Like again, if it's cannon rush, we're not gonna destroy it. That's that is a fact because we have marines already at this point. But what if he was like gonna leapfrog cannons with like bringing up stalkers or some shit? You never like you never know. Because he doesn't have a natural, it's not a big investment to make a bunker, and it's just going to make sure we have peace of mind to not die. Because, again, his build still could be very aggressive right now. The range of his build still is open to aggression. Also, he's mining gas as well as this. So this could become stalkers with it. It could become a forge upgrade with it. It could just go into tech. Who, who knows what he's doing? It's a little random. But, again, we, once we have, like, tanks, it doesn't matter. Let's make our uh, gas. Or take our gas, rather, and then keep making the CDs for our minerals. Let's start making depots at our natural. Are we smoking weed this speed to GM season? No. I don't really smoke weed, dude. Rudy, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't really smoke up a lot. I'm a square, dude. I feel like also people who say I'm a square, that's like such a boomer thing to fucking say. Oh, I'm such a square. Yeah. No, I, I, I would, I definitely would fucking smoke up at like an, a, a party or something. I don't really like smoking up at home though. I don't like smoking by myself. It's more of a party thing for me. Yo, hit fam, thank you for the the six months. Also, if you're a kid and you're you're watching this with your parents, don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. Stay in school. Get those kids on a dare YouTube video right now. <laughs> Thank you, Rudy. Additional supply <laughs> dare. required. Let's get stim pack. 
Let's get our gases that are natural. Let's get our engineering bays that are natural. Not enough minerals. Gotcha. SCV ready. Mind my minerals. Let's go and put another depot on the side of our base. Because again, what just happened last game? A guy tried to all in us from the side of our base. So let's go ahead and prepare some type of a defense this time on the side of our base. Like, or not really a defense, but like vision. That way, what if it's like a prism? What if this guy actually now wants to go for like plus one weapon multi gateway of production and he goes all the way to a prism? Is that an efficient way to do it? No. We'll talk about that more in the future about like, you know, build orders and shit. Exactly. But all we know is that he could be aggressive. This, his build is more in the aggressive category than in the macro category. So preparing for the potential of us being attacked on the side of our base makes sense. So I'll make another command center because we have a lot of money. And uh, we're still pumping out of our buildings pretty hard. Let's also have to go ahead and take our armory. Also, we're oversaturating the space pretty fast. and this, Which means our third base is going to get saturated super fast. We have camera hockeys for every one of our bases. Five, when does Diablo 4 come out? So this is a YouTube video that's going to be set in stone forever. I'm going to take a guess. Let's see how good I am. This is going to... Someone put this in the YouTube comments, please, uh, that watches this. And it, write it down. And let's see if Vibe's correct on the date. Okay, let's see if I am a prophet. I think Diablo 4 is going to come out on July 17th of 2023. No more talking about that now. Let's see if I'm correct. That's my that's my date guess. Yeah, start making Thors because we have a we have our building, our armory. Let's also start making barracks. Yeah, before looks pretty fun though. I, I I hope Diablo 4 is a fun game. I really do. I think it'll be super fun. It could be super fun. Okay, so group one, go to the left side of the map on the bases. Me second medevac, group two, go to the right side of the map on the bases. <clears throat> Grab SCVs off my natural, put them on my third. Notice how our third is like instantly fully saturated. Let's go ahead and take our gases out of our third as well. Upgrade complete. Take another base over here. Upgrade. Start another command center. Get 2 2. I haven't seen a base on the map yet while my medevacs are flying down, so we're still looking for that. Get a couple of these SCVs on gas. Make a couple more depots. Put these guys on the third base. Oh, I found a base. Drop the mineral line. Okay, and what about here? Keep ma keep macroing in the process. There's no base here, so let's boost and drop the mineral line. Behind the mineral line. Okay, SCVs are good here. Let's transfer over to this base now. So we rallied all our command centers here. Get more SCVs off. Send them over. Look at our money. It's a little high, right? Let's add a couple more wrecks. I can't spend my money right now. So it's, it's high and I just can't spend it. So we add more production. And now we know where our opponent's bases are. And what did we just get attacked by? I heard... Uh, Marines are dying over here. I saw a stalker walking away. That's all good. Next time I get attacked in bottom right, we'll look at that as well. Because we're still killing something. Okay, what are we... Oh, we're fighting a lot of stalkers. Okay. Sick. Stalkers. It's all good. At least now we know what we're fighting against. We have an idea of what we're fighting against. It's just stalkers. It's ground, specifically. Okay, we're, uh... You know? Going into our reactors. Five, that's a long way off of the Diablo announcement. I know. Dude, Blizzard takes forever to release shit. And uh, Diablo also... They didn't even announce their fifth class in the game yet. Or their fourth class. I honestly thought they were going to announce... Uh, or sorry, they, they didn't announce the fifth class. They did announce the fourth. I thought they were going to announce both of the classes. They only announced one at BlizzCon. I was like... Okay, that makes me think that next year is going to be the fifth class. And the year after that is going to be the re release date.
Okay, we're about to max out. And now get three three upgrades. Get level two weapons for vehicles. SCVs are uh, we're a little under again, but let's go ahead and move out now, guys. Let's also get rid of a bunker now because we're maxed. So we're gonna send my army down to like right here. Get it grouped up in the in front of his base. Let's go ahead and also explode our production a bit more again, like we always do. Let's get a factory, get a starport. Uh, let's get a few more racks again. Anywhere we can fit it, like maybe there, and like there, whatever. Lift, uh, lift this off and take this base up here. Okay. Okay, my army's fighting. A move, stim pack. We heard my units were under attack, so we need to help them. Like, tell them to stim pack, essentially. Okay, so let's go back to our macro tasks really fast. We now have 19 production buildings. Uh, where's my factory and starport? There they are. Now we have 21. We rally in the middle, and now let's grab my army and go A move the base. A move the base right here. Nice. Reactor on starport. Tech lab on factory. Uh, four tech labs on racks. Now all group four with all the rest of our buildings. All reactors for the rest. Reactor, 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 reactor. And finally a reactor. Grab my army. Let's A move the next base. Get my army grouped up so my medevacs don't just fly across and die. Group up my army. And now I'll send my army in. And we can even stim pack. Okay, there's nothing there, so... We'll take a second again for our macro. Check my base. Check my base. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it, Felix. Fix it, Felix. I'm gonna fix it. Okay. It's a good movie, by the way. Okay, now here's the base. Attack it. Stim pack. <coughs> now we're gonna remax on Marauder, Marine, Thor, and uh, Medivac. Fix our bases. Base, good. Base, not good. What's base, pretty good still. Base, Upgrade good. Complete. Let's go ahead and expand again because our bases are starting to get a little bit over again. We're going to mine patches out. Supplies is dropping a little bit and instantly remaxed. Okay, three threes is just about done, so let's start building armor and building range. Let's get level three weapons Upgrade. for armory. Let's take our army now and A move into his main base in Stimpak. Because our army's just sitting there doing nothing at this point. Um, we can get smart servos because what that does is again it allows our Thors to switch modes if we ever want to do that, if it ever makes sense. If we're suddenly in high impact payload and then we're like, oh shit, he's got Mass Phoenix or he's got you know a lot of units, a lot of mutas or something. And I'm like, whoops, let's put our Thors quickly back into explosive payload if I remember to do that. We could do that really fast. It would be like almost instantaneously. Oh yeah. Thank you very much, Fridge Daddy, for the sub. Vibe, you're the man. I appreciate the eight months, dude. Okay, and then one thing we can do too. Here's another thing. Complete. We're gonna start doing this more as well now, by the way, guys. If you actually have nothing to do. GG. GG! My uncle works for Blizzard and he told me D4 is going to be out by 2018. Yeah, well, your uncle got fired. Uh, so he's, he's not, don't work there no more. Thank you very much, Barry, for the bits and Fridge Daddy for the sub. So if you guys get to a point where you're maxed out, you have all your production, and you're like, Vibe, I have my army like attacking my opponent and it's not dead yet. You're more than welcome to do something like this, okay? And like, let's say you have all your expansions on your side of the map. You're more than welcome to do something like this. Try not to like traffic jam your base too much. Like try to put them off to the side a little bit. Kind of like this. Or like put it next to another command center like that. Hold shift, right click the middle line so they mine afterwards. And you can turn all of these command centers. Like you can go for like legit, like another 10 command centers. And you can turn these all into orbital commands. And the reason why this is so effective is because let's just say I, I actually get to a point where I have now been able to expand to my opponent's territory because I need to keep rotating SCVs around. If I have like 10 orbital commands, 
that all have like let's say three mules each and I can drop like 20 mules or something or like 25 30 mules on this base it's insane how fast you can give yourself a mineral jackpot and also you gotta realize these are if, if you can actually get to a point where you have map control for a little bit and you are now able to expand in your opponent's territory and you're like you know what let's drop a bunch of mules on my opponent's base all this money that you take and you mine you can drop mules anywhere you want on the map, right? And if this command center is done and you, you're you're turning in minerals repeatedly, all this money is actually his money you're stealing. And you can't... He does, Mineral fields don't generate minerals. They don't, like, regenerate themselves. So that's permanently gone. That means it's money that you've stolen from him the entire game. So if you actually get to a lot of command centers and you actually can somehow put, like, a random-ass CC in their base and you can, like, land it on a patch that's open, like this base... Or like this base or this base. If I steal like tw like 15,000 minerals here or like 10,000 minerals here. 15,000 is actually more than the base has, I think. But uh, if I steal like 10k minerals here, which is very... That's more realistic if you drop like 30 mules on it or something. Uh, like repeatedly. That's you, you can mine this base out in a matter of like two minutes. And it just mule dropping it. And you would steal this guy, like so much of this guy's money. And then that means that even if the command center dies, it's just a command center that dies. It doesn't even need to have SCVs here. It could just be mule dropping the shit out of the base with all these extra over commands. And it also gives you more scans as well. So it's multi-purpose. This is the last priority of Terran though. This should not be something you rush into. Some Terrans rush it and it's scary when you do that. You have to have you have to really know what you're doing. But if you uh if you add it on later on. If you add it on late. My name Bill. Okay, Bill. Thank you very much for the bits, Bill. Thank you, dude. If you add on the command centers late when you have a lot of bank to do it with, it just gives you ways to generate even more bank. So it's good. It's super good. Okay, and look, look at the supply, right? Our opponent actually proxy a ne proxied a Nexus right off the bat. Which is also why... It's also why... We don't freak out, and I don't go... Like, this is what this is exactly why I don't like it when players... Freak out when they see something like multiple barracks or multiple gateways. And they don't know how to react, and they go... Oh shit, I know Vibes said to beat a gym build, but now... Because I saw double gateway... That means I'm going to get killed now if I don't do something like build four racks before I build a factory. Because otherwise I'm dead, right? No. Don't do that. Don't be the guy that deviates the build. Ever. Like, in, uh, you can deviate the build once you actually can play the game properly in Diamond Plus. Like, if you if you think it makes sense to deviate the build in certain ways because you're scouting well and you're multitasking and all these kinds of things, especially in Masters, that's fine. But in Platinum and Below, <clears throat> all, devi all deviating the build does for you is it slows you down. And it turns your build into some form of inefficiency. That's all it does. Not worth it. Okay. I, I love it when people say things like this. Again, we have uh, David, I love you, man, but we have another person in chat trying to disprove the points that I make. And they say this. Vibe, it is actually counterproductive to drop more than eight mules on one base. Check this. Okay, let me tell you what I mean by this, okay? Let me explain it. A mule can mine over a SCV. It can. A mule cannot mine over a mule. It can't. So if you drop eight mules on a base, they're going to get 100% efficiency. If you drop 16 mules on a base, each one of that second mule is going to get probably... 50% efficiency, maybe like 60% efficiency. It's going to get not 100%, but it's going to be probably a little bit more than half. If you drop three mules per patch on a base, yes, the third mule is not going to grab any efficiency. It's not going to have any efficiency because it's not going to mine shit. In Gold League, that's not super relevant in my opinion, because if you're already in the position of the game where you can do this concept, you're not trying to min-max your muling realistically again gold league is the league we're teaching here right and finally the point i was trying to make as well because again another way to say it would be okay well when i said drop 30 mules in the base 
what it's more about ta- what it's more talking about is is I'm talking about oh, doing I did say doing it over the course of like three minutes, right? You'd mine the base out in like three minutes. So yes, I did mean to do it in multiple waves, but I understand I didn't super elaborate on that topic or that exact point. Jason, thank you very much for the fucking raid, dude. Much love. But the point is, you can definitely have two mules per patch be more than zero percent efficient. And today, Juggernaut Jason is Juggernaut Bill. Thank you for the uh, bits, Burry. Much love, man. The biggest point I was trying to make as well is that you're stealing your opponent's minerals, right? I probably shouldn't even have brought this up because, again, it's a concept that's, like again, a little advanced. And this is where it gets exhausting teaching. Uh, but, again, the concept would be even even if you don't have 100% efficiency on your mule and it's like the first one has 100% and the second one has 50% because it's literally having to wait for a second and then it mines. It's waiting for a second and then it mines. You're actually still mining the patches as fast as possible with mules and you don't give a fuck how inefficient it is as much because what's really happening is you're stealing your opponent's overall money on his side of the map. And if you have 10,000 minerals in the bank... It's not like, oh, I got to min-max that mineral income, though, because uh, I'm out of money. I got to drop only eight, and then I got to drop only eight. So, yeah, there's a little bit more of an explanation there for you guys. I hope it uh, helps you. Okay, let's go back to our drops now. So our first drop catches a base, right? We'll go back, we'll go back to this one first because it was first. Our first drop flew over a base and we came back and we dropped on it. Uh, it's nice, right? These the, We actually caught the proxy base. And then our second drop... Went into his main mineral line, and what's happening is, is again, we're dropping two different sides of his base. It's pulling him one side or the other side, and it's super annoying for Protoss. And now look at the guy's economy as we do this. We haven't killed a ton of probes. We've killed nine, though. That's still not bad. We've killed nine probes. But now look at his mining. It's going to drop so heavy because he's got two mineral lines doing nothing now. His income just plummets during this. And this was a almost like an AFK drop. We like all we did was we checked where the bases were on the map and we just dropped the area. And he actually only he only really saves the space because of recall as well. So that was a good move by him. If we if we kill this nexus that would have been even better. But even so, for like the last mi over a minute, those drops just massively paid for themselves because we fucked over his mining so hard by making his probe sit there doing nothing and sitting there doing nothing. Like this sucks ass for Protoss. And that's also now why we're so far ahead in, uh, in supply. It never fails that these bitty titties land at the most awkward time. Sorry, vibrators. Yeah, you're all good, Barry. Thank you, man. Uh, guys, I'm just, I'm sure you can see it in my face and shit. I'm just mentally exhausted sometimes with teaching all the time. We are all built on this blessed day. Uh, thank you, Drizzle, for the 100 bits. And Barry, thank you for the bits. Much love, guys. Jason, thank you very much for the raid as well. Thank you for your time and dedication doing these videos for us. You show your value by sharing your knowledge. Much love. Yo, Calorion. Cal uh, Calori Calori Thank you very much for the... Uh, I'm sorry for ever doubting the vast knowledge of the great Vibu. It's all good. Every I bring shame to Twitch chat. You want to ban me and I'll still sub to you though. <laughs> I'm not gonna, love you, I'm not gonna babe. Ban, I'm not going to ban you. You want to know the only reason why it's exhausting is because... Every day, I have to have the same conversation, just like what happened right there, calmly, 
with like 40 people a day. I'm just like, ah, oh, God. It gets exhausting doing this shit for like four years in a row. And again, I'm not talking about... I've only been a streamer for four years, for anyone watching this on YouTube. I've been a streamer for fucking 11. But I'm talking about... This is the fourth time I've made BDGM. And I... Every time, I'm answering the same questions. And I get it. It's it's new players. And I, I I'm, again, I understand. I'm trying to be super calm about it. But... These questions repeatedly... They tend to break you over time. <laughs> My fucking mentality is kind of like a fucking twig. It's going to snap at some point And I'm going to lose it. Okay, so now we're going into uh, pushing his main base. Same thing as always. And he's you know he's just dead. Forty five supply versus two hundred. What can you do, right? You're you're dead. You also have no income. His income is legit zero right now. It's just not registered yet because he has no probes mining. And he did. And he did. So efficiency, boys. Same thing as always. Again, we're just... We're reading the comp... Again, what are we doing all through Gold League? We're getting a little bit more of an actual read on the base. We're actually looking at our drops whenever they happen now to actually aggressively just understand what kind of composition he has. And then we're speeding up our build overall with a little bit of a faster max. And finally, we're using camera hockeys as well. Get coins at rally.io. Yeah, thank you, O... Uh, OMG Gaming TV OM Gaming TV uh, For buying Viber Coins, man Much love, dude Enjoy your Viber Coins Spend them wisely Burry, thank you for the 100 bits I'll match some Vibe Raiders On Bitty Titty Donation Bone Nations For a little bit if you want No, you don't It's, it's okay, dude I, I do appreciate that a lot you, you, you guys don't have to No one has to donate, honestly I'm not Asking for any donations I mean, I, I love that you guys Want to support it I don't want to Say I hate it I obviously don't but no, you guys, no one has, like, I'm not, I just want you guys to know, I'm not angry, I'm not frustrated. I know you guys are probably only saying that as well, because I'm just exhausted. But I am fucking mentally exhausted from making these series over and over and over. Making the first one, I was super passionate about it. Second one, I was just improving the first one. Third one, I was kind of like, well, what can I do now? Fourth one, I'm like, do I really need to make a fourth one? And I was like, yeah, I guess it's fine, I'll make it a fourth one. And yeah, it's, it's, I'm finding ways to make it relevant, but I'm, ten I'm prone to more frustration this time around, I'm not going to lie. I'm exhausted doing these things. Anyways, let's not go super negative in the, in the video. Uh, I'll stop it there. Okay. So, boys, what are we doing? I'm taking the gas. I'm making a barracks. <clears throat> thank you, Barry, for the bits, though. Bill. Thanks, man. What's going on? Thank you, thank you. Huh? Mommy. In the rear with the gear. Bad news. Grab two SCVs like we talked about before. We can send one that's weak oh, off and have one go yeah. back to mining minerals. This guy's scouting just like last time. Make a marine, make an orbital command. Have this guy go down and scout the guy's main, the other guy's main base. Thank you, M Cursed, for the three month resub, dude. Much love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We hear you. Yeah, yeah. Not enough minerals. Command center upgrade complete. Our SCVs are under attack. Not enough minerals. Move it. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I didn't get to see much. All I know, this is all I know, right? He had a marine down the ramp already. So, at least I know if his marine was already done just like mine was done, he went for barracks first. And it was defensive barracks first. That's all I know. This is one of those games where, like, you didn't get your actual read with your scout and you have to kind of assume shit now. Like, you have to start thinking about, like, what does that mean? Uh, and, yeah, I can guarantee that... He, do, he did not go command center first, because if you went command center first, you cannot have a marine that fast. 
Yo, Maynard, thank you very much, dude, for the uh, the raid. What's up? Thank you, thank you. Hope you had a wonderful stream, dude. I am running with stream delay, guys. I'm sorry because of uh, making the gym series right now. I'm trying to avoid getting stream sniped every other game. Uh, but thank you very much for the for the raid. Much love, dude. Welcome, guys. E5, thank you for the bits. I'm just going to start using this to send myself messages in the future. Be sure to drink water. Okay. Thank you very much, E5. Thank you, dude. Don't get dehydrated. Alright, let's go ahead and... Uh, Oh, yeah. Saturated or natural? Squids, thank you for the three months, and Burry, thank you for the bits. Thank you, guys. Let's go and build depots that are natural. Camera hotkeys on my natural and my main base, and my soon-to-be third base. You can also put a camera hotkey down before you build the base, so if I put like a camera hotkey there, for instance, if I go back to that, I can grab the command center, click the camera, and fix it to right there, and stuff, and so on and so on. You want a piece of me, boy? Ready. Let's siege our tank on the high ground. Thank you again for the bits of Burry and Trollbert SC. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Gonna make another command center because we have a lot of money for it. Up, ready to go. Let's make a depot. And also our command center, we have a lot of money for it too because our natural is basically fully saturated. So our macro is flowing, it's pumping. It's pumping, dude. Let's go ahead and siege our natural depot area. We'll siege the other tank like right there. Again, same reasoning we talked about before. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly recommend you go back and watch a previous video because we talk all about all these kinds of things. If there's ever a video anyone watches that they're like, okay, Vibe, what the fuck are you talking about with these concepts? If you go back and watch former videos, we talk all about all these concepts throughout former videos. It's, it's like the whole series is relevant from bronze up because again, it's all about developing habits and stuff like that. So don't have too much of an ego and think that if you're gonna, if you're like a platinum player and you're like, all right, I don't need to watch bronze. I'm way better than that. Trust me. I'm going to tell you shit in bronze that you'll probably... When I say probably, it's just, again, it's a nice way of saying you will not know these things. But, you know, there's not... Obviously, you know some stuff. I'm not saying Yo, you don't know anything. Thanks for doing but. another B2GM. Working on learning to use camera hotkeys. Base cam addict recovery program. What do you do in the late game when you have six to eight bases and it's split map? I have enough hotkeys for eight bases, but six. I use three camera hotkeys for bases the entire game, even to GM. You don't need a base camera hockey for every base. I want you to know, macroing like this, guys, is not realistic every game when you're in Masters League and when you're when you're Diamond Plus. We're actually gonna have to do builds that are more around actual builds with timings and a little bit more micro. It's not gonna be just sitting there macroing defensively the entire time all the way to GM. The reason why I start you on it, though, is so that you understand how to macro because it's, it is required the whole time and it's required to do it fast. Like you need to be able to handle it accurately and quickly, but we're not, we're not going to play exactly like this until GM. So you don't need eight camera hockeys for eight bases. Don't do that. Uh, that's a bit excessive. You need, I would say three is good because most games are going to be played off of three bases and then base four, five, six, seven, eight. Those aren't like the start of the game anymore. Those are late game and they're just an expansion. You just transfer your workers to it once and you're done. It's not like you have to like constantly bounce between them. You're much faster at the game at that point, is the point I'm trying to make here. It's not as slow and tedious as we do in these lower leagues, because again, the reason why I do it this slow and tedious is because I don't think you can play like this fast in fucking gold league, right? Also, that was an, ex that was an exaggerated example. No one plays that fast, but let's be real. Like People play a lot faster than what I'm doing right now, once you get higher and higher and higher. 
which is why our maxes will fat will speed up and all these kinds of stuff like that. Okay, let's build like five more racks. Because we have a lot of money. Let's go ahead and drop his base, like right there. Let's go ahead and drop his base, like right here. Cool. Get our command center landed properly. Drop some mules. Okay, we're going to start making Thors because we have our uh, armory. Also, what kind of composition does he have? I don't see anything yet. I didn't see anything earlier. Okay, Marauders and Marines. That's all I need to know. I just want to know what he's doing. He's going ground units. Sweet. Sweet. Sweet, dude. Sweet. Ground units. Sweet, dude. Ground unit almost. Grab my racks and make a bunch of reactors. Tell this command center to go to a new base. My grandma died in 2009, but for some reason she kept chanting follow vibe, follow vibe, follow vibe, and then a siege tank blasted her into sticks. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Okay. Your mom was a great prophet. Or your grandma, sorry. Command center upgrade complete. <laughs> Follow vibe. Add on. Macro is coming. Go, go, go. She just kept drawing M's and everything, like an M in like the sand, an M on the mirror with fog, like the the steam or whatever. Fucking an, an M. She put the the magnets on the fridge and the letter of an M. It all meant something. It was from Macro. She knew it all along, before I even made my first series. Okay, we're basically done with SCVs. There we go, we're, we're looking good, guys. Upgrade. Fix my upgrades. Get more supply, we're just about maxed out. Let's go and drop a couple call down supplies because we didn't actually build supply depots. We have a Thor, a medevac, and now we're, we're just seconds from maxing out. So nice. Now let's go ahead and grab my army, move it forward. And we'll go to, we'll just pick, well again, this on this kind of situation, this guy didn't expand very much. So let's just pick the right side. We're just going to pick a side, go to the right. We'll go outside where his base is, to the right. Now behind this, what are we going to do? Racks, 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 racks. Just get racks down. Shift like a new open middle line because the middle lines are like mining out. Make another racks there. Make a factory and a starport. And then like another few racks is here. Racks, racks, racks. Shift click the middle line. Grab all these production buildings we just made. And now we're at 23 production buildings. Now we're good to go. Now let's A move my army into his base. And let's get ready to attack this base right here. And go, go, go. Is there a base here? Yes, there is. So stim pack. And we saw it's a tank, so now we already knew it was bio earlier, and now it's a tank as well. So still, once again, looks like he's going for ground units. So I don't need to start worrying about like a battle cruiser transition or something like that. Click one more time. It's still ground. Cool beans. Still a lot of ground stuff. Okay. Let's go ahead and make four, ra four racks in the tech labs. Let's make this into a reactor, this into a tech lab, and then all, react all racks into reactors. And keep remaking my army. <laughs> Fix my economy. Make another base. Make another base. Add on. Complete. Go ahead. We can't really drop mules anymore because we're tapped, which is okay. Let's go ahead and drop another command center here. <clears throat> keep making units. Keep filling up all my racks. All my buildings are coming online right now. Complete. So we're definitely, uh, our, our supply is starting to like really pop off here. Not enough. And suddenly Upgrade. we have Complete. no minerals because we just spent it all in seconds. Okay. Base is good, base is good, base is good. 
Upgrades, looking good. Upgrade, let's start an upgrade there. And now let's go left this time instead of right. Because uh, last time we were right, right? So now let's go left. So now let's take our army. Let's go down to bottom left. Let's meet up like right in front of the newest base we would go to. Check my bases, check my bases, check my bases. This base is not good anymore. Fix it. Fix it, Felix. Drop some new mules over here or something. And now look at my money, right? We could be like, okay, now's the time. Let's make a few more command centers. Let's make like another command center up here or something. I really can't. I can't fit it in. It's okay. Uh, make a couple more here then. Command center. Command center. Command center. Done. Awesome. We just made an extra six command centers, guys. Which are all going to become orbital commands, right? And then we can make this a planetary. That could be a planetary. Let's move down into the front of his base. And there is a base there, so let's dip back it and attack it. Now let's grab our upgrades for engineering base to get building up building upgrades. 3-3 three, three is just about done. Uh, that's good still. We can get some more servos just in case we need it. For Thor cha changes of Upgrade mode. Complete. And now that's dead. Uh, the base is dead, rather. So let's hit the ne let's hit the next base. Get my army ready to go. A move towards it. Stim pack. Go back to macroing, right? Marauders, Marines, instantly remaxed every single second the game goes. Thors, medevacs. Look how fast we're making army here. You can drop around a mules here. Like my supply drops and then it suddenly just skyrockets again. Field I'm already maxed out again. Now let's make a bunch of orbital commands on all these command centers we just made. So we just made another six orbitals. So now we have nine orbitals in total. And how about my economy? Fix. Good. 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 Transfer SCVs over here. <laughs> SCV count. Still good. Okay, and now check that out. He's got battle cruisers, right? So let's take our Thors and go on high impact payload. And now since he's also using VCs, let's go ahead and make uh, a couple tur turrets around my base. Turret. Turret. We can A move towards this base for a second. Grab SCVs, send them over to new bases. We're losing SCVs, let's rebuild them. And now since we have so many command centers, we can, we can fix our economy so damn fast. We just drop the mule for every, every mineral patch. Up a mule again over here. Make another turret. And how's this going? We can A move this base because now he's going down there. Let's go ahead and build a turret. Supply. Two more SCVs. We're still really good on SCVs. And now he's going. It looks like he's just constantly like running me in circles. So let's now attack his base again. And since our army happens to just be on the right side, let's just go to the right side. Not a huge deal. It's all good. Uh, we also have Thor's trap there. It's okay. So if you see that, just do this. If you ever traffic jam your base and you go, oh, what the fuck? My units are stuck. Now they're not stuck anymore. Okay, we're taking a fight here. So stim pack, A move. Watch my supply. Remax, 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 remax. Instantly remax, instantly remax, instantly remaxed. It just maxes every single second because that's how much money we have the ability to do that with. Let's grab one SCV and let's finish off this turret. Oversaturated, send them away. Oversaturated, send them away. Okay. Send them over here. Let's take another base while we're at it. Take like this base or something. And we're maxed. So, yes, these fights aren't the most efficient, right? They are definitely not. Like, oh my god, these fights are so efficient. Wow. They're definitely not that efficient. But does it matter? Because we're just maxing every second anyways. Let's go ahead and send my army over here now. Get ready to attack. Okay, yeah, we can grab our SCVs and we can repair the command center, hold shift, right click the mineral line. Because he's currently trying to kill it. So our, we'll group my army up over here and get ready to attack into a bunch of tanks. SCV count is currently still just down by one ideally, but we're still pretty good. Transfer over some SCVs to a new base again, like this base right here. Army's grouped up, A move, stim pack. And again, we see he has tanks in his composition, there's Thors, or sorry, there's Battlecruiser or whatever. So we know it's, it's mostly ground with like a tiny bit of air. So what are we going to do? We're going to keep putting our Thors in high impact payload. And we're going to keep making Marine Marauders. Our, our composition is still just fine. The only difference is we're going, should Thors be an explosive or high impact? It's a battle cruiser. It's not mass banshees. So we're going to go explosive. 
And the fight's over. Let's go ahead and group more enemy up over here now. And let's attack the next base again. Let's go ahead and attack. Stim pack. And we're good. Uh, repair this base again. GG. And then shift, right click the mineral line. So once again, same thing. Like, uh, we just have a, a bunch of money, right? And now, look at all these command centers. Just for I should have actually not ended the game yet, uh, but I already did, so it's too bad. But look at this. Look at all these orbital commands. We have about two mules there. We have about two mules there. We have about three there. We have about three there. We have two there. We have about three there. We have two there. We have two there. We have about two there. So the next, like, when I said about, what I, what I mean by that is about, like, nine to ten seconds. When I said about, that's going to be the number that it would have been. So if, if it, like, 18, 14, 18, 14, I'm just, like, Mule, 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 mule. I could actually just mule dump the fuck out of this base and mine it at 100% efficiency with mules. In terms of like every second one of these patches is being mined by a mule. And although, like we talked about before, there could have been some mule inefficiency inside of that. This is his expansion. This is his base. And the reason why I took it is because I have taken all the other bases already. And if I, instead of dropping mules on my side of the map... If I drop mules on his side of the map, I steal his money, and I mine my own at the same time. But if but if I don't steal his money, all I do is I mine my bases out faster, which makes me then need this base faster because I run out of money. And again, we have a lot of money, which is why we win the game. But you won't always win the game this e like this way every time. You're eventually going to hit a point where you you and your opponent will clash, and neither one will just run the other one over. And again, why does that happen? Efficiency versus non-efficiency. Once you can both play efficient, to, uh, you know, enough to, like, battle each other, and it's not just, like, one guy rolling the other one over super fast, uh, what's going to happen is, if I could actually somehow steal this guy's money, by the time he actually wants to take this base, what if these patches that start on 1,800 per close patch and 900 per far patch, what if instead it's only, like, 400 or 500 left on every close patch, and then all the far patches are just gone? So instead of this base having, oh, I don't, I, I haven't, I, I, you guys can add it up. It's four times 1,800 plus four times 900 equals what? I, uh, or you could rather do, you could just do 1,800 times, uh, it's uh, six sets of 1,800. So 1,800 times six. That would also be another way you could do it, uh, which is 18 times six. I'll just do it myself right now. 18 times six. Hold on. Has anyone beaten you with your own B2GM build? Imagine how proud you'd be. BTW, I'll try to time these to be in between matches from now on. You're all good. Oh, uh, thank you, Vitamin yeah. C. You guys, don't worry about anything, okay? Uh, chat, you're all good. Wahoo B2GM. Guys, just know I'm exhausted, okay? I'm exhausted, but I don't want special treatment. I'm not asking for special treatment. I'm not like, please stop interrupting me. Or, I'm not saying that at all. You guys are more than welcome to... If you if, if, Guys, if you want to support the stream... By all means, support the stream. I appreciate it very much. I don't want you to think I don't. I do fucking appreciate it a lot. That has nothing to do with it. And, and again, no one is required to support the stream. I don't usually ever talk about... And from me, I don't ever talk about people supporting the stream because it always comes across a weird way. If I ask you to support, I'm not asking for any support. You guys can do it only if you want to. And I do very much appreciate it. And don't worry about it. No one apologize for wanting to support me because if I ever made you actually feel like that, I'm a fucking dickhead. Uh... I'm just again. I'm, I'm exhausted about teaching StarCraft, guys. Let's be real, okay? It's, it's it's. I've been playing this game forever, and when you play a game for too long, man, you become a grumpy old man. That's how it goes. Uh. But yeah. So, what was it again? Eight, uh, eighteen hundred times six, which is eighteen times six, which is a hundred and eight. So a hundred and eight. Uh. Which is 10,800 minerals per base. If this guy has the ability to have 10,800 minerals for a fresh base. And when he shows up, all he's got left is like 1,800. Because it's only got like 500, 500, 400, 400. And every other patch is just gone. That fucking sucks for him. Super good for us, right? If I get to mine this base for like three minutes straight with mules. Just coming back every like 40 seconds or so. Drop another round of mules. 30 seconds later, drop another like 12 mules on it or something. 10 mules, 8 mules, 13 mules, whatever. Get a bunch of mule mining going on the whole time. Because I have so many orbitals to do it with. 
that could be the difference of winning or losing a game. Again, that's going to be something more that will happen. These kinds of these are things that like will make more sense later on in the game. But I'm just trying to explain a concept. And if you can if you can help it, it makes more sense to always drop mules as a Terran player. This is the whole reason why I'm telling you guys this point, anyways. In Gold League, whenever you have mules, you should never mine out your the first base you have. Do not mine the first base and then move your way forward again. So, like, in the order that I expanded, if this is my main, if this is my natural, if this is my third, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to drop mules here while I have three bases. I don't want to drop mules here while I have five bases. And the reason why is because the further out you expand, the harder it is to defend those bases. And the last thing you want to do is potentially lose a fight at a outer base and then lose control of that expand. <sighs> Hold on. I am the model of a very modern major viral. Thank you very much, Barry, for the bits, dude. The last thing you want to do is you 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 don't want to drop mules on a base that's back in, in your main and like like for instance, mine your base out super fast, and suddenly your newest expansion, which is fully fresh and has no mules dumped on it yet, let's say at one minute later, you didn't mine as much as you could have because you didn't drop mules on it. And then it gets killed. A fight happens and your opponent kills your, your new expansion. And you're like, dude, fuck. I'm actually all in now because I overmine my bases that are... Barry, thank you for the bits again. I can confirm Vibe has literally never asked for a single cent yet. I've given 50k bits. <laughs> He's just that coup. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, Wadza, thank you for the 413 sub. Thank you, man. Uh... Yeah, uh, the the concept is, if you lose an expansion because you just lose control of a fight and you lose the newest base you just took, if you could have soaked up more resources from it, you you could also be still mining back at your other bases because you didn't over mine them fast with mules. You guys get the point. You guys you guys get the point. A wise man once asked Thank you, me, "How do you recover from failure?" I responded with, "Keep making SCVs." Four five four five four five, and don't fucking worry about it. Yeah, fuck that guy. I mean, <laughs> it's, you said a wise man. <laughs> well, yeah, no, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I, didn't, I just let, I just listened to four five four five. Thank you for the the bits popping. Much love, man. Macro, right? Hell yeah, keep it up. Oh, yeah. Just started playing Zerg. Had no idea it was so fun. So many things to do. Inject, spread creep, drone. You got a lot of stuff to do. You got a lot of stuff to do. Go ahead, you got a lot of stuff to do. Every race honestly has quite a bit to do. Uh... To, to, to be fair. Like, every race has their own system of shit to do. The creeps from mechanic of Zerg, though, is definitely... In terms of just racial mechanics, that is definitely the most time-consuming mechanic out of all three races. But every race has, like, different ways that they all spend a lot of time doing certain things, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I fucking... Honestly, I like Zerg's mechanics the most, personally. I'm, I'm definitely a Zerg player. Main. Myself. Uh, sorry, Terran players. I'm not actually a Terran main. Um, I, I, I love the whole creep spread avenue it's uh it's mighty nice because you have you basically the better it is the more the map you see it's like it's almost like having map hack because you just see everything it's it's really good <laughs> but thank you very much wigglesworth for the 14 dude Let's scout his base. Bad news. Scout his base, dude. What's got that base, man? Oh yeah. Yo, not a later. Sure Thank buddy. you, dude. Thank you very much. 
for the six month resub. Oh my god. Command center upgrade complete. All right, let's uh, scout in. Okay, we see a fast expand. Cool, we confirmed this guy is now gone for a quick expansion. We now also know he's got a pool done. He's got a gas finishing up right now. He's got double gas. Okay, so there's a little bit of a, devi a little bit of a deviation in the builds now, right? And the reason is, is because our opponent went double gas. We're on single gas. He did expand. So am I expecting any aggression right now? No, I'm not expecting any aggression right now. But if he double gassed me, tech builds off of a, a, off of a decent economy now make a lot more sense. So do I need a bunker? No, I don't need a bunker. But I should definitely assume that this game... I found you through your last B2GM and you got me to diamond on every race. And I can kick both my friends ass in this game. 17 great months. Keep up the awesome work, my dude. Thank you very much, Rosewood, for the 17, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you, man. And uh, it's awesome to hear, dude. I'm glad you're enjoying it. You're, you're getting better at the game overall. And kick the... You're kicking your friend's ass. That's always uh, that's always the most satisfying thing, right? Is when you actually can just kill your friends at the game. So fuck yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, dude. But yeah, what I was saying about the gas thing was uh, if your opponent is going for double gas and you're way before you are, it just means they can tech faster than you. Like he could do it. He could just make a roach warn and go all in as well if he wanted to. He could be like timed all in, you know. But that's why we make tanks. We're not intimidated because he's not one base alone me. It's two base at the very minimum, which means it's already del like the the attack part of it is guaranteed delayed for at least a couple minutes because he didn't go gas before hatchery, he went gas after hatchery, so auto automatically he can't attack me as fast. So I have enough time now guaranteed to have a tank out before we get attacked. It's a hundred percent guarantee. As you can see, I have a tank out and we haven't been attacked yet. I don't know if that's his plan either. It might not be his plan, but if it was. I'm not intimidated. This is why understanding how to read a build is good because the fact that he expanded means that we can get up our expansion as well and we're not intimidated by like dying right this second. As long as we're playing efficient, right? We're using all of these concepts with the rule of a baseline of efficiency. We're not assuming that our build is behind for no reason by like 30 seconds and we're just like, well, I mean, I know it's okay. I didn't make SCVs, but who cares, right? I mean, that kind of shit definitely matters. Okay, so we're going to make a depot up here. And why are we making a depot there? We've already been Nidus before, and this guy's opening double gas off of a natural. So although it's not a one base all in, it could still very well be a Nidus. Also, there's an Overlord in my base. Let's go ahead and grab some Marines and just click the Overlord and then shift click back to the back here. Just get rid of the Overlord. I mean, it's just sitting there. It's literally just sitting in my base, spying on all my stuff. Bill. Thank you, Bill. Do you actually want me to call you Bill from now on? I mean, I will if you want me to. Thank you, though, Bill, for the, uh... I get... Dude, guys, I get trolled literally every day, all day. And I'm at a point where I just don't know if anyone's joking or, any, or not anymore. <laughs> so I don't know if that's just a joke or if that's serious. But I'll call you Bill until you say otherwise. Thank you, Bill, for the, uh... For the bits. I'm on troll overload at this moment. Okay, <laughs> let's make a couple racks. Because we have a lot of money and I can't spend it. We got a lot of money. Okay, let's go ahead and do our drops. One and two. Also, I'm sorry. I know some of you guys that are watching this on YouTube are probably like, damn, Vibe is high strung right now. I'm sorry, guys. It's uh, it's just been exhausting a uh, couple months for me. Uh, I don't, I, I'm trying really hard to not make it unfun. I hope it's not annoying. Uh, okay. Research complete. We're going into our racks. This better be good. <laughs> ready. Command center up.
Okay, so we don't see a base on the left side. So let's go ahead and boost in and drop his natural middle lane. And do we see a base here? No, we don't. So let's boost in and drop there. Am I going to micro it again? No, but am I going to take a look at it when I get there? Definitely yes. What's happening? A queen. What's happening here? Zerglings. Cool. And it's just ground units. Okay, a lot of roaches. I now know I'm fighting ground. That's all we cared about. That's the only thing we cared about. I, I just, I know it's ground. So we're super good to go. And, uh... Yeah. We're already fully saturated on this base as well, so we're expanding again. Let's go ahead and drop our mules here. Notice how every time I expand, I always drop mules on it. I don't. Every time I expand, I don't go back to the main base and drop mules. I want to make this mineral line last as long as possible. I don't want it to just disappear and then have it like a ton of minerals here that aren't being used yet. Drop some depots. Research complete. Upgrade complete. Ready for dust off. Okay. Uh take our gases at our third, because it's fully saturated. Lift this off and take another planetary. Make another one in the process. Because, again, we're mining super fast, right? Our bases are saturating really fast. Get two two upgrades. Check my bases with my uh, camera hotkeys. Main base needs to be fixed. Grab eight. Natural needs to be fixed. Grab two. Third base needs to be fixed. Grab a chunk. Just put two on that. Shift click two. Two on this. Shift click two. Put one back on the middle line because we're over by one. Shift click one. Go to this new base. And there you go. We just fixed an entire... Okay, well, we didn't re-rally commencers fast enough, so now I'll send two more. And now we just fixed an entire economy. And now we'll rally to the new base we're going to mine from. And we just need to make a few more SCVs and we're good to go. Thanks again, Vibe, for doing all these games showing us how to macro. You definitely have the patience and skills we need. Hope you don't get too exhausted. It's okay. I, I actually... I, I hate myself for even bringing it up, but I'm at a point where I'm... I, I, I just did, so it's okay. I hate myself that I did that, though, because it changes the whole aspect of the uh, dynamic of chat. So my bad for doing that. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. And uh, don't ever worry about that. It's totally fine. Thank you very much for the uh, bits, though, dude. I appreciate the support. Okay, so now we got, we're pretty much maxed out. And now let's go ahead and set up my army because, I mean, we're maxed, so... Let's go ahead and start moving out. Again, do we know what we're fighting against? We're, we're fighting against ground, which is fine. So I'm not fighting against a bunch of mutas and light air units. So for now, let's just put my Thors in high impact payload. Because again, if I don't know what his composition develops into, we want to be high impact payload. It's better against everything overall. But if he goes mass muta, we'll go back into explosive. But we didn't see mutas yet, so we're going to assume that they don't exist yet. Because we don't know. There's only That's only one unit out of like 12 that the Zerg could make, right? So we don't know if he's what else he's going to make. So now let's, let's group our army up like outside of his base. In the meantime, let's make a bunch of uh, like factory, starport, uh, make some racks, 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 uh, racks, 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 racks. Shift with the middle line. Okay, we're here. I see creep. A moves to back. Let's see if we can kill something here. There's no base. Okay, that's okay. So now we're gonna. Now we see the army. Okay, it's fine. A move here, stim pack. Grab all my buildings that we just made, add them into our control group. And now we have only 18, so we'd be looking for like two more, because we're not done. SCV count also needs a little more. We would need like six more and we're done, because we don't we were only at 79. And now we're actually good. We're 20 buildings and uh 85 SCVs. Uh, same thing as always, we can go back to our upgrades, get 3-3, get level 2 weapons for vehicles, come back to our tech lab factories, make 4 tech labs. We'll go back to group 4 because we added all of our racks into the control group. Hold down C, all reactors get slammed hard, and then we could even like lift off another command center, land it over here, take another one, and continue to go macro, 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 macro. Meanwhile, we can just A-move into his main base, 
like that. Like a move of the guy's main base with our army and uh, blah, blah, blah. And like, here's an example. High impact payload doors. Watch, watch this. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Fuck. Complete. Watch this. Mineral I want to show you guys an example. Here's an example of what I mean by high impact payload doors are just better than explosive doors when you know it's not. Or when, you, when it's not mutas and if you don't know it's mutas yet. Complete. If it was, if we saw mutas though, we definitely would have done explosive doors. Please tell me there's another overlord here. Okay, oh fuck, there is. Okay, I just shot it though. Okay, so I'm gonna have what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna there's two overlords in this area that are both really high health. I'm gonna have the explosive Thor kill the top left overlord, and I'm gonna have the high impact payload Thor kill the bottom right overlord. Okay. So which Thor is which? The left one is explosive. Okay. So the left Thor is gonna kill the left overlord. The right Thor is gonna kill the right overlord. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's have him kill both overlords. Let's give an even better example. Listen to this really fast. The explosive Thor has to kill two green overlords, which is going to take longer in theory, right? It, it's more hit points overall. The explosive Thor, the one that does AoE and is good against like mutas and shit, that we should only put it on when we know they're going like mutas. This Thor is going to kill the overlord that's green and the overlord that's already orange. It's already half dead. Okay, so let's see which one kills the two overlords faster. So which one's gonna kill faster? Out of these two guys. So the the Thor killing with high with a high impact payload killed two overlords, and the time it took one Thor. And now he's helping. Look how long that range is too. He just helped the other overlord die too. I killed two green overlords with the high impact payload Thor. And the time it took one explosive Thor to kill one Overlord. It killed literally twice as fast. And this is going to be the case against like everything in this game. And it's going to be even it's going to be even worse. You could kill like even more shit with high impact over explosive versus massive units because this is actually an Overlord is not actually a massive unit. But against you can see on the over over there on the command card over there on the massive card. Uh, it does even more damage with massive. It fucking destroys massive units. So high impact payload better overall against everything. And if you know he's going Banshees, Mutas, or Phoenix or whatever, like little little air units that are there's a lot there's like a swarm of air units. There's like 30 of them. Then explosive is good, and the only reason the only reason why explosive is better there's only one reason. The only reason why explosive is better is because it does AOE and little air units stack really hard and they die. Also, to be fair, it does dam bonus damage versus light and you also multiply that by four, which is fucking insane versus light units. But the main reason why it's better is because it AOEs. So if you have 30 mutas, high impact payload does not AOE. It's single target only. So uh, explosive Thor hits like eight mutas at once and suddenly you have clumps of mutas dying and you're like, oh, sick, that's pretty good. So that that's the difference right there, right? It's high impact is just overall better unless you know it's mass little weak air units. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. All right, dude. <laughs> Much love, man. Much love, dude. I just got rocked using your build. I just got rocked using your build. Oh, no. Additional 
Oh, baby. Okay, let's make an orbital. Let's scout his base. Vibes using this guy's corpse to throw down lessons? Okay. Yes, I was. I know. Go ahead. I mean, those overlords paid the price for a learning a uh, moment for all you guys. High impact payload Thor, really good. Not enough minerals. Make a depot. Command center upgrade complete. Not enough minerals. What's up, babe? What's up, dude? Okay, so he went CC early. Like, look at our CC. Look at his CC, right? It's the same thing. His rack's the same thing. He's got a factor already. His build looks very similar to ours. We can tell the only difference in his build to our build was that we made a second depot first. He made a uh, factory first. That's all G. And, and how, how does that make a difference? It means that he's probably not going to make as many units out of the racks as early as we do. That's the only thing it's going to probably do. Because we're we're making constant marines and then constant SCVs, so we would have supply blocked if we made the factory first. Am I am I worrying about that Reaper right now? This guy's microing his heart out right now, but am I worried about that? No, the marines are literally being controlled by AI right now. I'm worrying about not supply blocking, and I'm worried about not stopping my macro. And we actually still killed the Reaper. I didn't even. I, we weren't even there, guys. We weren't even there. Right. This is just what I mean when I say, again, the goal is micro. The goal is macro, not micro. And I honestly think if we if we went back to the replay and watched it, I do think that I mean if he didn't run around my base for too long. It was only like ten seconds. But there's a chance that he didn't macro during that, and he didn't kill anything either, and he ultimately ended up losing the Reaper anyways. So that's rough. That's brutal. Oh shit, dude. Oh fuck! Oh, if you do that, if you do what I just did, if you double click accidentally and, and pull all your SCVs off, just uh, fix it. Go back to the middle line and then just grab three off again repeatedly and fix it like that. But, yeah, that was obviously an accident. I'm sure a lot of people will do that over time. Obviously not good. We just kind of ruined our economy a little bit, but it's okay. Try not to do that. This is the best answer I can give you. Okay, let's go ahead and put our tank up here. Siege it. Now lower that depot so we know we're good. We can build another depot up here. Who's better at karate, Chuck Norris or Jackie Chan? I wish you guys could see what I'm doing right now. Put a Vibu Norris in the chat. Vibu Norris in the chat, boys. Jackie Chan's a badass, but let's be real. Chuck Norris, okay. Did you see him writing Bruce Lee, guys? I mean, come on. The only reason, the only reason why Bruce Lee beat Chuck Norris in that fight is because while the camera was turned, Bruce Lee pulled out all of Chuck Norris's chest hair, and then for a brief moment, Chuck Norris was injured. It didn't come down to karate; it came down to the chest hair. Chuck Norris had a <laughs> lot of chest hair in that video. Uh, I still remember that shit. I was just like, Jesus, he's got a fucking ton of chest hair. My God. What a fucking man. <laughs> Guys, do I care that there's a tank push at my base right now? Not really. A move the area. Literally, A move the area. This guy is forcing me to micro a lot right now. Okay, he ran away. Pull back. It's annoying, right? You probably think to yourself, vibe... Bro, I fucking hate this. This is annoying. It is what it is. Try not to freak out. Try not to panic. Hey, let's aim move the area again. Take our gases. Take our NG bays. Pull our marines back for a second. Because, again, we uh, don't want to just die. We don't want to run into the tanks, guys. We only attacked towards the Liberator because it was there. 
But we're still chilling. We can also, if you have a second, you can even take SUVs. You can repair the tank, hold shift, and go back to mining minerals. Let's go and make some more depots up here. Because he killed all my depots in the front, so we need more depots over here some, over here now. Let's make, oh, I didn't make another engineering bay. My bad. Let's go and start a weapon upgrade. Let's get upgrades. Let's get upgrades. Stimpak is done. Is he attacking me? No. He's not attacking me. Like, he's not actually uh, making me feel threatened. He's there, but is my base dying? Is my command center getting shot the whole time? No, it's not. Oh, that SCV's stuck. Let's go fix that. Grab our medevac, get him out of there, and drop him here. So he can mine minerals again. Okay, now, here's the crazy thing, right? Let's still drop him, guys. Group one. Go around the left side of the map. Find the nearest base. Understood. Group two, go around the right side of the map. Find the nearest base. We'll do, command. Okay, let's drop like four more racks or five more racks. We'll do. Notice how I don't give a shit that he's at my base right now. Did I care at all? But he actually salvaged the bunker and left. I didn't give a shit, guys. I was just like, yeah, you want to sit there? Just sit there. That's totally fine with me. I'm okay with it. Also, look, we're fully saturated. So let's actually just build another command center like at this base. I'm going to do it now because he literally left. I don't see his bunker here anymore. What's going on? It's all G. Our SCVs are under okay, let's go and build an armory. What's happening here? What was that? Okay. So let's go ahead and green box our units and go and attack with our with our. Uh, let's just attack like green box these units and attack up there. Let's start building buildings that stop being built. Build building, build building, and the reason why is because we have these medevacs right here. Medevac. Medevac. That's why I didn't want to suck the army because we would have actually fucked that up, right? So we just tried to green box those units and go, hey, move that area for our, that defense right there, right? It makes it makes sense because it would have made our whole drop pointless that we just set up. Okay, let's make a bunch of reactors. Keep making SCVs, guys. Let's actually fix our main mineral line. Also, look at what he's got. Uh, more Marines. Okay, cool. Sick. Second base, third base, take our gases. Grab these command centers in our control group. Grab these barracks in our control group. Rally to the front of our base. Start making Thors. Keep making medevacs. Get two two upgrades. Get level one weapons on this shit. Get my SCVs on the mineral line properly. Go take this base. Well, or sorry, take the planetary, I mean. Make a bunch of Marines because we have uh, all our Marines done. Let's drop some more SCVs. So we grab four here on our, on our natural. Hit the camera out. Keep it the third base. Whoop, boom. Hit two. Hit two. We just filled up our gases. Go back to the natural. Grab one more. Send it to this base right here. Boom. We just use camera hockey's like a fucking boss. Let's go ahead and make uh, a bunch of Marines. Okay, he's currently attacking. Or he's attacking me with one Marine. Let's just go down there so we don't start losing a bunch of SCVs for no reason. Center Make a couple more depots. We don't want a supply block. Okay, what just... Oh, he's attacking. Okay, so we just got more marine tank. It's, it's all good. It's all gravy, baby. Okay, he's, he's dropping my main base. So let's grab my SCVs. Let's pull back. And then shift, right-click the mineral line. Take my army and attack towards him. Okay, so look what he's doing. What's, what's he doing? He's harassing me, right? So let's do this. Fuck this guy. Missile turret. Missile turret. Missile turret. Missile turret. No more harassing for you. Uh-uh. Make more units. Make Thor. Make Marines. <laughs> I like how he's like, this is awesome. And I was just like, fuck this guy. Obviously, I'm not being serious. I'm just saying, I'm just I'm joking around. It's gamer speak. I love this guy. I actually think it's really cool that he watches the Gym series. Okay, and now we're going to get three three upgrades soon. We're almost maxed. Here he is again. Let's A move my main base. Also, since he's playing like this, let's do this. A move my main base with everything. Grab some of my army and A move like this base. We're going to split my army around my base. We can send back some of my units as well. Green box is shit and go over here and attack over here. Keep making SCVs, guys. 
Am I freaking out that some of my SUVs are dying? No, I'm not. It's not time to freak out. It's time to fix shit. Okay, and look at what's happening now. We're maxed out. So now that we're maxed out, what are we going to do now? Same thing we always do, man. We're going to get 3 3 upgrades and we're going to go fucking crazy production, dude. Okay, 85 SUVs. We're on point. Uh, I think we're missing a command center somehow. Are we? No, we're good. Let's make another command center. And now let's make... Uh, let's get our army. Like, So we're going to go left this time. Why are we going to go left? Because last time we scouted a base. We scouted this was on the left, right? We scouted on the left side that there is his base over there. So we're attacking over here with our army. We're getting our army grouped up just before his base. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and go back to our production and go... Factory, start for it. Racks, 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 racks. Shift, mineral line, mineral. Mine some mules here because it's a brand new base. Really nice. Drop a few more racks here. Racks, 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 racks. Maybe like one more. Racks. Racks. There we go. We're good. Now grab my army. A move here. Once we get close, we're going to stim pack. So A move here. We're going to stim pack. And we're fighting against tank still. Now he's actually at my base too. So now rally point all my buildings back to my base and start remaxing everything I can as it dies. Grab all these production buildings we just made. All of them. And make as much shit as we can. Make another reactor. Make a tech lab. Base is under attack. Take my army and attack towards this base and now this base. Stim pack. Because now we're, we're, in ma we're in base trade mode so now we need to be careful here. Now he's dropping my main so let's go ahead and grab my marines. Stim pack and move towards my tanks. Keep making units. Make Thors. Make medevacs. Let's now A move towards my natural. Do you see how good these tanks are in defense when they're sieged? It's fucking insane. Now all these buildings over here, we can make like four tech labs out of them. We can make a bunch of reactors. And yeah, I mean, just keep keep macroing. Am I am I panicking right now? Yeah, a little bit. I just shit myself. I don't give a shit, guys. It's fine. We're just going to keep maxing. So now he's between my bases, right? So let's do this. Save the main base. Re-rally all these buildings over here and put them here. So now all my units that I make are just going to walk over and die between his army, right? We can stim this. A move since now he's fighting it. It's all G. Three, three upgrades are just about done. Let's go ahead and keep expanding. Let's expand around him. So maybe take another base like down here. Just expand around or like you go like this. Click here. Shift click here with a building. So I tell my SUV to go around the tanks. Keep making SUVs. Our SUVs are under and my base still stands because I'm doing this. This base still stands because I'm doing this. His base is dead. Right? So uh, we're we're just chilling now. We're, oh, we got Spidey but blocking going on. Let's make some depots. Don't freak out. It's not time to freak out. Okay. So our army's going to engage again. So let's go ahead and stim pack it. It's all G. Keep making units. And now at this point... Okay, we can repair this. Grab this. Attack Why that. Why do you prefer stim -pack. weapons upgrade for vehicles instead of armor? Wouldn't it be better to help the Medivax and Thors? And why not both? Looked like you could afford it. <clears throat> I'll tell you in one second. Let me uh, finish this game first. And we'll, that, that's kind of a point that'll take me like five minutes to explain, so I don't want to talk about it just yet. He's not out of the game yet, so let's focus here first. A move. Every base in the map that we don't own right now. And let's go fix the bases that died. Build a new base. Build a new base. Fix SCVs that are oversaturated. Send them to a new base. Yada, yada, yada. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Keep making SCVs. Try to fix our economy. And we just solved that... We just solved that base trade, right? We solved the base trade by separating rally points if we have to, which makes it so much easier. And then, uh, you know, stuff like that. Like it... Wait, we just keep making, like, when things die, we remake. When things die, we remake. Things die, we remake. The only way we're going to totally die is if things die and we just don't remake because we're over-microing our army, like, trying to leapfrog tanks and shit. 
If we do that, then yeah, we're not going to make anything because we're too busy microing. So now let me answer the question. I've thought about that. By the way, you know, having fun, uh, 1972. First of all, thank you for the 100 bits. I'm not going to lie. I actually highly considered what you're saying. Why don't you get armor instead of weapons? Because it would make your Thors better with your push. It would make your medivacs better with your push. And it would... Uh, it would overall make your pushes better because you're just again you're just a moving. I legit had a had a bit of a like a, a, a thought process about this where I was like, should I should I not do this? That is one of the biggest pain points I had before I made this bio series. Like that you literally just ask the exact question that I thought to myself as well. Like should I? And this was my reasoning as to why I didn't do that. Okay, so the way I thought about it was a Thor is not going to be in the front of bio. Let's be real. It's slower than marines and marauders, and it has more auto attack range than marines and marauders, so it's always going to be in the back. We're not... I'm not micring it as well, right? So my... Because, again, a Thor is slower and it shoots further, so it's always going to be like... Uh, uh, like in the back, just like catching up. And because of that, armor already makes the Thors a little bit more useless. And then... If the Thor is in the back as well and it's shooting shit, it means before the armor becomes active for the Thor, it's going to be doing damage. And if it's da if a Thor's damage is increased, just for the Thor, again, we're not even talking about the tank yet, uh, the Thor's damage is going to be increased. So what that's going to do for us is it's going to make us deal a lot better with people who go for uh, literally anything. Thor's are good. I'm not even kidding. Thor's are good against literally everything. They're good against every unit in the game. They're extremely good against some units, but their Thors are overall a very strong, good unit. So what really happens as well, the, the huge thing it does is let's say, let's say I am fighting against like a Zerg going Mutas or something like that. Suddenly now, if I have weapon upgraded Thors that are always going to be behind Marines anyways, as soon as the Mutas engage, if my Thors weapon shots are getting multiplied by four upgrades per upgrade because it's attacks is times four. I'm going to fucking melt air so fast. I'm gonna, like, Mutos are going to melt to my Thors. And it's going to make bio. And even if the Thors don't even hit a break point where it's like, well, now they're going to two shot or something like that. It's just going to make bio shred the shit out of the units as well. Because instead of, instead of like, let's say one Thor shoots a pile of Mutos and the Mutos would have dropped down to like, let's say, again, I'm not going to give you exact numbers here. You could do the math yourself. It's 14 times four. Which is uh, 56, or yeah, it's 56. 14 times 4 is 56. So it, it, 56 off of 120 is uh, 64. So the, the Mutas with one Thor shot would drop down to 64 health AoE with no weapon upgrades. But suddenly, with a weapon upgrade, it's now 16 times 4 instead of 14 times 4. So we're getting an extra. Uh, Eight damage because we're getting uh, four damage per upgrade. So instead of using, instead of using living with sixty four health, they're going to live with 50, uh, 50, What is that? Fifty six health. So that's just a couple less hits from marines. And if I have like sixty marines going, <laughs> mutas are going to die two hits faster from every single group of mutas that gets hit by a thor. And if I have two thors, it's same like you double it. If I have three thors, you triple it. You know what I mean? Like it adds so much fucking damage to your army. And again, Thors are always going to be in the back. They're not going to be like, get out of the way, Marines. Follow me. The Thors are kind of... You know what Thors are like? Is anyone, has anyone ever fucking driven a car on the highway? And you're in a car that's like a standard like four-door or like a two-door car. And you're like, you want to go like 75 miles an hour or something like that. And you're driving next to a truck that's doing like 60 or like 55. And you're like, God fuck this guy drives slow like he's obviously in a big truck and you're like i need to get i need to like merge and like just pass this guy really fast because there's no fucking way i'm gonna sit here going like 15 to 20 miles an hour under the speed limit behind a truck guess what marines have the same concept a marine's gonna be like get this fucking thor out of the way move out of the way. i'm walking by you right now marines walk faster so it doesn't like the thors are always gonna be in the back and it, it, it would help the medevacs though i'm 100 percent agreed with that but it doesn't really do shit for the Thors, realistically. Because it, once the Marines are dead, if you're going to lose the Marines super fast anyways, like, the Thors are going to die right after. You're not going to be like, wow, I'm, my army is, like, one-fifth Thor supply, but yet my Thors are always winning fights because they have armor. Like, it's not going to... You'd be better off helping the Marines stay alive because your Thors kill shit faster. Secondly, 
This build is all about having tanks in your wall like this. And we never, for now, we will do it later, but for now, we never unsiege the tanks. We literally leave the tanks sieged the entire time. In our base. Every time we A move, the tanks are part of that A move, but they're not being they're not moving anywhere because they're stuck in siege. And when the tanks have weapon upgrades, they get five fucking damage per upgrade. So they get 15 damage upgrades in terms of a number. Because it's five, five, five. In terms of armor, it's always one, one, one. It does not matter. There's no armor upgrade that you get on an engineering bay. Because I, I know some asshole out there is going to be like... Katniss plating. <laughs> <laughs> New steel frame. Armor. Okay, smartass. I'm not talking about a specific one-off one, one -off upgrade. I'm talking about one one two two three three. Those upgrades are on the stat card of the unit. That's like one one two two three three. There is no upgrade in the game that is an actual Evo Chamber, Engineering Bay, Spire, Armory, Forge, Cybercore. None of those upgrades get more than one per upgrade. They're always one, 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 one every time. So if I can make my tanks have plus three armor or plus 15 damage, I'm gonna, I'm, I feel like I wanna choose the 15 damage. That's a lot more usefulness out of my tanks. Also, my tanks are hiding behind a depot wall. They are hiding behind a depot wall on both sides. Two tanks hiding behind a depot wall at my natural. I mean, it, w it was there, but the Terran killed it. And then another depot wall over here in my main. Every game we're doing this, right? So when a base trade happens, these tanks fucking shred units even faster. And I would rather them kill units faster again because if, if units actually get on top of the tanks, it's not about the tank tanking through it and then killing stuff. It's about killing shit before they get on top of the tanks. Because as soon as, as, soon as an army gets on top of three tanks, those tanks are going to die. Like, they're just dead. Uh, three armor is not very much in this game. I'm not going to lie. It's it, or like Really, it's four because they start with one passive. Four is not a lot. Like, th these tanks are going to die super fast as soon as they get jumped on. So, weapon upgrades just seemed like a better choice for those reasons. But I still do get armor upgrades eventually. And the reason why you... The final way to answer your thing, which was, why not both... I definitely can't do both. I'm actually spending my money pretty decently up to the, my first 200 supply. And then only when we have 200 supply does my money actually start ex uh, like, you know, a kind of crazy exponential. You cannot afford, you, like I'm telling you right now, you can fucking not afford double ar engineering bay upgrades and double armory upgrades. And then also expect to make a realistic army fast. That's not, that'd be like saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a Zerg player and I'm going to go Ling Bane Hydra and I'm also going to get just like a couple Corruptors in case my opponent goes for some air units. And I'm going to go double Spire, double Evo Chamber and get like, uh, you know, melee carapace and then flyer weapons and carapace. Like it's too much fucking gas. So you cannot afford that. You cannot afford that. Can't. Trust me. You can't. Our gas would be literally depleted repeatedly and I wouldn't be able to make medevacs properly. Or I can barely make medevacs and Thoris properly as it is if I'm macroing properly. Uh, and you also have to keep in mind, here's the final piece of this, of all of this, okay? You have to keep this in mind. Don't forget this point. This is confusing for lower level players whenever they watch games like this. But this is a serious, a serious point. Remember this, okay? I am not macroing as fast as possible right now on purpose. So if you ever notice my resources go up to like 3,000 sometimes or 2,000 sometimes, it's because it happens to gold players. And I don't expect a gold player to be a GM level macroer. So I'm not going to try and macro flawlessly every single game and go, that's all you're going to do, people in gold league, do that. I'm slowly trying to make it a little bit harder every time because I'm, I'm, it's, it's very hard for me to do this as well, by the way. It's like a judgment call for me every game where I go, yeah, let's not macro for a second. Okay, let's macro again. Okay, let's not macro for a second. Okay, let's macro again. Because I'm thinking to myself, this is probably what a gold player would do. They're not going to be... If if they're if you were flawless with your macro, you wouldn't be in gold league. I'm just, it's as simple as that. You would be at the very least diamond league. At, at least diamond, maybe masters. If your macro is fucking flawless. So, yeah. like it's. I'm trying to make the series realistic too, right? Keep Always keep that in mind. Okay. Let's, uh, let's look at this... Uh, Attack. So 
So uh, go back to that, actually. I'm very curious. I want to see that. Watch me what runs Reaper in my base. Reaper's coming to my base right now. Watch oh, watch production yeah. for blue. Watch blue's production. Who be two GM? Yo, Gamer Grim, thank you very much, dude, for the uh Gamer Grim, thank you very much for the uh sub. The uh, fourteen months. Tier three. Oh Jesus. Ugh, I feel like an air bubble in my throat. Like but it's not a burp though, it's just like it's like almost like indigestion or something. Jesus. Uh thank you, Gamer Grim, for the fourteen man. Much love. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, here we go. Guys, ready? Watch. I'm cl I clicked on the Reaper. So we're waiting to see when this thing dies. Let's see if he builds any units out of these buildings after this. Like, what happens in his base? Let's watch. Let's look at the multitasking, right? What happens here? Reaper's currently running around my base trying to kite my Marines and attack my Marines. SCV sitting there. Reaper's almost dead. SCV still now I no SCV's being made in the command center. Okay, he's starting to starport. He's still... Okay, now, now the Reaper just died. The Reaper literally just died. I just killed it right there. My Marines... Like, this is literally his dead body right there. As you can see, that's his, like, corpse right there. Because if I go back a couple seconds... All right, I went back five seconds. My bad. That's what I was saying. He just died at 257. And we were looking at his base at 258. Right here. This is when we were looking at his base. And how long has it been? He tried to kill one SCV, right? So this is the biggest thing of all. He tried to kill one SCV. This is why I don't want you guys to do micro in lower league. He tried to kill one SCV. Watch. 250. 250. Yeah? 250. It takes 12 fucking seconds to make an SCV. 12 seconds. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen seconds. Even if he killed my SCV, we'd be tied. But he didn't kill it. And I didn't micro anything either. My Marines were legit just walking around on A move, being like, there's a Reaper in the area, let's chase it. I see him. He, he's right in front of us. So the Marines chased it by automatic AI movement. I didn't tell them to do anything. I just said, Marine, rally point my racks right there. And they just chased the Reaper by chance because the Reaper went this way. And he didn't jump in my main base or whatever. If he jumped on my main base, all I would have done was went, select all army, attack towards the Reaper. And then forgot about it again. I wouldn't have done shit. Uh, I wouldn't have worried about microing against it for now again because this is Gold League, right? It's not Masters. It's not GM. It's not. We, don't, we can't multitask that hard yet. So even though my opponent, and this is this is the fucking thing people do all the time. They overthink micro, and they like if, if he killed my SCV, all that would have happened is we would have been tied. But he didn't kill my SCV, and now he's behind by an SCV because he just didn't make one. So that's where people always fucking dip in uh, their macro. They just when they multitask too fast before they can handle it. This is why I tell you not to micro. It happens all the time. This is not like an uncommon... I know people do this. This is not uncommon at all. It's very standard for people to skip macro like that. So, anyways. Uh, go back to our build over here. So, yeah. like, Let's look at supply now, right? Oops. Supp oh, Jesus. Sorry. Supply is super close. Super close supply. He's keeping up really well. All things considered. Not bad. How's the worker count looking? Uh, we're only a couple ahead. Yeah, he's keeping up pretty mostly well. He's doing a really good job, honestly. And then he shows up. And now here's where the game starts getting really messy. This is where the game gets really messy. This is not the time. This is not the time that we want to attack into his base. And the reason... The, nor is it the time he wants to attack into my base. The reason why is because... We both have a tank sieged. We both have a fucking siege tank that will shoot each other repeatedly. If we, if either player pushes right now, that player, whoever pushes, is gonna die. This is the this is the 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 reality of tank versus tank right now in this game, and like like with the the phase of the game that we're in, because if I a move him, 
The only way I would potentially break this is if I also pulled all my SCVs off the middle line and A moved with those as well. And that might be kind of scary because then I'm, if I only kill a tank and like five Marines and I lose like 14 SCVs in the process, that could suck ass. I'm going to definitely be super far behind in economy. But if I just sit here, he can't push me. I can't push him. That's just, it's, that's just as simple as it comes down to. And now he starts trying to siege me with a Liberator, right? He starts trying to siege me with a Liberator. So all I do then is I now A move the, like towards the Liberator with my Marines because I'm like, get out of my base. And as soon as he leaves, I back off because, again, we, neither one of us wants to walk into the tank. A cool thing we could do, if, if you find what I did here, if you find the way I dealt with this way too hard, a cool thing you can do is instead of getting a uh, medevac first, you can just make a Viking. Just literally make a Viking. That would be an even easier way to deal with it. And the reason why a Viking would be super easy to deal with this is because then you could put your Marines on like whole position next to the tank or just put them in the back so they don't walk in and die. And then have your Viking kill the Liberator because a Viking can't be shot by a tank because it's a flying unit. And a Viking will destroy a Liberator insanely hard. So that's another easy way you could deal with this. Just make sure your Viking doesn't fly into the bunker and die. Uh, and again... The reason why it's easier to control your like a couple units here back and forth is because we're in our we're like the fight is happening directly on top of our command center and we can keep macroing in the process. We have we have we're not overlooking at this. I'm not my camera's not down here the entire time. My camera should be here the entire time and I'm just dealing with that shit. This tank is already guarding the doorway. And then now Check it out, right? Check it out. How many SCVs have died? He actually he killed one SCV. This tank push actually killed my SCV that was building a depot. He killed one SCV. And remember remember how before that push? This is why I say don't micro. Remember how before that push? I was like, he's doing a really good job. He's tied with us. He's, he's like only a worker behind, but that was because of the first one. He's really like he's keeping up with my supply. He's keeping up with my workers pretty well. What happens as soon as that fight's over? Did I just destroy his army? Not really. I killed his Liberator, and I killed one tank because he accidentally rallied it into my base. And I killed a couple Marines because he also accidentally rallied them into my base, and my tank just chewed them apart. But he's behind because he didn't macro during that, and now he has 1,200 minerals in the bank and 500 gas, and I have like one-fourth of that, or one-third of that, uh, respectively. I have like a lot less resources in my bank, and all those resources of difference have been invested into producing more shit. So now suddenly I've taken this eight worker lead and this 19 overall supply lead because my opponent tried to do a microing timing attack to me and did not macro in the process behind it. So now we're just ahead. So it's really hard for my opponent to now come out of this into the mid game in a good position now because he's always going to be behind now. Because the more ahead I like the more SCVs I have, the more I'm going to mind than him overall the entire time. And it means that like. If we go, if if, for, if if I maintain for the next like four minutes a 10 worker lead or so, that just means that if I'm always mining on average like an additional, I don't like uh, 100 resources a minute more than my opponent or whatever. On average, it means that 10 minutes later, I'm going to have a lot. I'm going to have it's going to add up over time, right? I'm going to have a decent amount of resources over my opponent. Okay, now my opponent is dropping Marines in my base, and it's a little annoying. But did we freak out? No. This is when I'm doing my Marine drops, and I just have Group 1, Group 2. Am I microing this? No. I'm just dropping Mineral Lines. I'm looking for expansions, and if I don't find any, I just drop Mineral Lines. And here's what this looked like. So there's the first one. There's the second one. This one didn't see anything. First, it got there first, so I because I sent it first. So I was like, okay, there's nothing there. Let's go ahead and drop the main Mineral Line. And this one didn't see anything, so I dropped the Natural Mineral Line. So I dropped the main. This thing does nothing really. Or I guess you know it does. It does something because the tanks actually stacked on the SCVs. The damage-wise, I mean, like there's friendly fire splash damage. I would say a couple SCVs died here, but I also made him pull off the mineral line for like 10 seconds. That's decent. Now what's happening over here? Let's go back to when this one first started. So far, we've killed one SCV. I think two SCVs just died to friendly fire, and that was about it. So not much died. Not like to be fair, not much died, and we literally just threw away 20 supply. 
We just threw away 20 supply because not much died. Uh, and again, that happens, right? But you know what that also did? It gave me a fucking scout around the map to see what he has. I got to see where his bases are. And I know that he doesn't have a lot more bases than he should. I, I know he doesn't have a proxy base in bottom right or whatever. And we actually have supply deficit right now. And uh, I mean, that's I feel like that's because we delayed our production a bit, which is okay. Because we have a lot more racks coming online because that's the whole point, right? When we have a lot more money, we can definitely speed up the macro process. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he did a good job recovering, honestly. I'm pretty surprised that he has 120 spy right now. Not bad at all. Worker-wise, though, worker -wise, though, we definitely have more economy. And now here comes all my money coming online now. All, or Sorry, all my uh, production coming online right now. And now my supply is going to catch up really fast. Because we have way more production at this point. He's also adding more in now, too. Himself. His macros, yo, uh, Sawyer City, your macros fucking solid, dude. I think if you'd, you'd have some, you would actually have had a much better chance, uh, in winning your games in general, in my opinion, if you just stick to macroing as a focus rather than micro over microing. Because I think every time you micro, like, look what's happening again right now. Like, I obviously he's having fun, which is fine, but look what's happening right now. Before he drops me, before he, like, I, like he got us, he got it. Okay, go back again. That's not. There we go. There we go. So uh, the medevac is like entering my base right now, right? It's right here. So before before the drop, look at this for a second. Before the drop, he is maintaining a 15 supply lead. Okay? 15 supply lead. And he's down by 12 workers overall. So his army supply compared to mine is huge. I've got 48. He has 70, right? Now, look at what happens to supply while the drop happens. Let's watch this camera as well. Watch this camera. Okay. So he just macroed when the drop started. That's nice. Proud of you, Sawyer. And now here comes the drop. The drop started. This drop fully started at like 9 minutes and 48 seconds. because, Or like 9 minutes and like 46 seconds to be fair. Because he was like right here. And then he boosted his medevac all the way back to here. Now what's happening? Camera. Micro, 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 micro. <laughs> Micro, 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 micro. He's still microing. He's been microing for 20 seconds now. I'm watching his selection as well. This is now 30 seconds of micro. He just now started macroing. And uh, what that ha what happened there, I mean, okay. This, this game's not going the way I want it to in terms of like talking about it. <laughs> I had I was catching up and then it went back again. Sawyer, you're proving me wrong. Okay, you're actually able to somewhat handle it. I feel like Sawyer is someone who's on the verge of getting into... Uh, like, if I had to guess his MMR, just by how he's playing, I would, if, if I had, like, my personal, like, rating scale of how I would rate him, I would say Sawyer City is high platinum. Like, I'm not saying he's smurfing. Please don't, please don't assume that's what I'm trying to say here. I'm not saying he's fucking smurfing. I could totally place, play, play against that platinum player in Gold League. It's very normal. But what I'm trying to say is the way this guy plays feels like this should be the MMR range of high platinum. Like someone who is starting to be able to multitask a little bit. Because he's definitely doing a better job than I'm expecting. I'm not going to lie. This is the kind of shit I would expect to see in high plat or like low diamond. Like people actually macroing here and there while microing. Because I keep expecting to take a supply lead and I fucking don't. So Sawyer City, you're doing a great job. Keep practicing and you'll get better and better and better. Okay, now overall it dies. But yeah, I mean, now look at it, right? I would say it, it, there was a little bit of drop off there. And now suddenly the supply just dipped from me trailing between 10 to 15 supply ever since the two medevac drops all the way until like the mid hundreds, like mid 150 range. And suddenly I just skyrocketed to 200 and the supply didn't move too much for Sawyer. And only eight Marines died. The, the medevac itself hasn't even died yet. Uh, I don't think it has at least. Maybe it did just die. I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Even if it did die, it's two more supply. That 10 supply medevac is not like the world of difference, right? I just went from a 15 supply deficit to a 30 supply lead. Because I was macroing the whole time. 
And then now here comes the next part where we move out. He also moves out at the same time. We go like two ships in the night and we pass each other. It's okay. And now here's where the weapon upgraded tanks really come into play. This is where they fucking wreck. Look at the opponent's base. He has a couple weapon upgraded tanks. As, or sorry, he doesn't have weapon upgrades, but he does have a couple tanks. But the only problem with this, in my opinion, is in, the, in this series, in this series, I uh, I actually, like for now and from from bronze to gold, I liked rotating the tanks around when we played mech. I think it's better with mech because mech is a lot more immobile. But with bio, bio is going to leave you more exposed than mech is on, on, on average. And I feel like exposing your tanks more than you should is scary. I think you should actually stack your tanks in front of your main and your natural. That way, if a base trade happens, you have an overwhelming defense. All in, one, all in like one area. Because look at the difference, right? Look what happens. When I attack him, what happens? I fight one tank. Just one tank. Tank dies. I kill the first tank, and now suddenly I'm running into a second tank. But it's just one more tank. It's, it's just one tank. And now I get in range of the second tank. Second tank is dying, and third tank's out of range. Now, he's, now he actually has three tanks. So he actually is making tanks during this. He's not, he's got, you got a lot, a lot of fucking tanks. Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, you're definitely doing your own spin on Beta Jam for sure. But yeah, it, it's all good. Like tanks are super good. Like now you have three tanks here. This is going to suddenly be a lot more effective. Even though they don't have weapon upgrades, it's still going to be pretty effective. Like you send out a bit of my army right there. But now look at this. Look at my tanks, right? So now I've broken in your base and now your base is going to die because you have just one tank left and that's not going to be enough to stop it. Also, look at your rallies, right? This is a huge deal. Also, you have, again, another tank scattered. You have way too many tanks in your base scattered defensively. Uh, so look, look at the rally points. This is the scary part, right? Every unit that builds is going to walk into me and die. This is fucking scary. This is, this is not ideal. This is definitely the priority right now. If every new, if every new unit you make is going to just walk out and die, you're going to die, right? So look at our base. We've changed our... My rally point used to be like right there. And now my rally point is right here. And now look at my rally point of all these buildings. It's still right there, which is all good. And now look at the rally points of these buildings. It's still over there, which is also a problem right now. But these buildings aren't fully online yet. But watch in a second here. Okay, watch for this bar to disappear. And now look at how these three tanks fare when they're stacked up like this. So there's always a tank covering a tank. So when this these Marines are getting shot by not only that tank and that tank. And now also these two tanks are able to shoot together with the uh, ramp here with these Marines. And these tanks have level two fucking weapons. They have level two weapons. So they beat the shit out of Marines even faster. Of everything. And they are just grinding this army to death right now. And now the whole drop in the main died, and the attack in the front of the natural mostly died. It's just some bio left over. And now check out the rally point here. Uh, watch the rally point, right? Because again, now you have a bunch of new tanks sieging my face. I can see that my base is the compromised once again. I, I'm not microing anything. I'm just making units over here. Now look at my rally point. It's in the front of my base. I'm guarding the ramp. Look at my other rally point. It's going to shift in just a second here. And I'm now gonna. I'm now going to now build. I'm going to now build units at this base. And there you go. The, the rally point of this base now has shifted. So all these units are now gonna just fucking chill here at this base. So every unit I make doesn't ideally doesn't just walk through the army over and over and over and die. And this is a really good scan by Sawyer City because he just fucking saw the high ground with his tank siege in a good spot. And now he fucked up my high ground defense, which is. It's nice for him, but again, it's one of those things where it, it still goes well for us because we're still taking trades because we grouped up another army. So we killed all of his Marines and we killed like a tank or no, we didn't kill any tanks, but we killed all the Marines. And now look, my next army is still being built. I'm just making a new army. We're still building army just right there, just chilling. Army over here, chilling. Just making more units and just chilling. So if my opponent ever wants to attack us, he always has to attack into a fucking area where... Also, it looks like my throws keep going out, but they're actually walking around because it's in a weird sim city. So they walk down and around. It's very awkward. Uh, but yeah, you get you get the point. Like it makes it harder to break me if I just scatter my units like this. You have to be very careful with rally points in a base trade. If you don't, if you're not careful, you'll definitely die. But so here, much love, man. I I see you in the chat. GG, dude. You played really well overall. Nice. And there we go, boys. Gold three done.
We're on our way to gold two. Or we're in gold, rather, sorry, we're in gold two. So promo is real. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed gold three. Uh, despite, I know there earlier in this video, there was some definitely me being like, oh my God, chat. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, okay? If you teach for, for a long time, and then, I, I would I would say this. I, I'm sure anyone who teaches someone can relate to what I'm about to say. It is not stressful to teach to teach somebody something if you tell them something that you know is effective and good, and they go, "Oh, okay, interesting," and then they apply it. Right? They 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 hear what you say, and then they use it, and you're like, "Nice, I just taught that guy something." It's super easy. It's not it's not stressful at all. The point that's hard is. Is when you know when you're teaching someone what is effective and what's good and then they don't believe you <laughs> and you have to convince them 5,000 ways on how it works that, that's the part about teaching someone that to get that, that gets exhausting it'd be like for a simple analogy it would be like saying this let's say you're teaching your little brother or your little sister or something who's really young you're teaching them math and you're like two plus two is four and they go no Three. You go, no, two plus two is four. Three. No, two plus two is four. Three. Okay. Let me figure out ways to tell this person that two plus two is four repeatedly, and I'll try to figure out a way that matches the way they think about things. Two plus two is four because blah, 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 blah. And then sometimes they'll go four. And sometimes they'll go, but it could be three. And you're like, oh my fucking God. Sometimes it gets exhausting, but thank you regardless. I do appreciate it. I'm glad you, I hope you guys like the video either way and uh, Sorry if it was a bit of a downer at some point. I don't want it. I don't want the video to be bad or anything uh, I'll, I'll play that alert in just a second, but thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video and until then uh, much love I'll good luck in your own games and uh, More power to you go crush some fucking nerds go rank up later guys